I got to tell you, I absolutely love that music. Azaria, thank you for authoring that. It's so fantastic. I get excited every time I hear that. It's, a, uh, it's just a great way to, to check in with the, check into the whole evening's experience. So uh, my name is Agrod. I'm one of the founders of Splinterlands. I'm the CEO, sometimes called the FOMO chief. Uh, and I'm here uh, really excited. Man, this is, I've said it a couple of times now that this is developer Valhalla. Um, what we are going through right now is just a lot of uh, a lot of releases and a lot of pieces are coming out, and um, it, it really is the culmination of a lot of work over a lot of time, and um, and really just amazing execution by the development, the support, the marketing, and the creative teams. They've been they've been killing it, and uh, I'm really really grateful for just how much work the the team is doing and what they're accomplishing. Um, so let's go. I want to do a quick team stand up and hopefully the uh, each person here uh, can go give us kind of a quick thing of what they're what they're going to be talking about tonight. Uh, Matt, do you want to give us a quick uh, overview of what you're here to discuss today? Roonies and whatever else, you know, people want to ask me about. Nice. Richard. Tower defense. It's all Ooh. about tower defense. <laughs> yeah. I mean, those that, that enough that by itself could be a show. Like e either one of those alone, uh, we just have a lot to go through. Uh, Nate, what are your what are your highest priorities these days? Yeah, everything creative. I could get on the Rooney train, or maybe we could talk about the the airdrops for Rift Watchers. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Okay, Manser. Oh, Crypto Manser, are you frozen? Or he's muted. He's trying to talk in the wrong spot. Man, so we're, we're, we're talking over in the uh, in the video ninja, not in the Discord. We'll give him half a second. I'll come back to you in just a moment. Uh, what about you, Weird Beard? Oh, my top level priorities are pretty easy. Uh, lots of Splinterfest announcements. You want to learn everything about the tournaments at Splinterfest? I got you tonight. Sweet. And Liam? Uh, I'll be playing a bit of a supporting role for all the new projects and just talking some, about some marketing behind them. All right, let's try again. Cryptomancer, what are you here for tonight? Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, we're good. All right, sorry about that. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Cryptomancer. I'm one of the core devs for Splinterlands, and I will be giving you guys a nice, juicy brawls update. Sweet. So that's that's a hell of a show. Um, and and if that was all that we were going to do, any uh, there's like each there's parts of that could just be their own show. But um, we really have a lot more to cover than just what we've discussed there. Uh, I actually, I have two guests that are coming on and we're going to start with them so that they can have the, the rest of their evening free, but we have Nifty Arcade and we also have Playground Labs. So what I'd like to do is invite our first special guests on, which are Nifty Arcade and uh, Jared and Tyler are going to give us kind of a rundown of where they are with their project and tell us a little bit about what, what Nifty is and, and how it, how it interacts with this community. love love where it's going the you know the the new things that are coming out so i've i've talked to actually quite a few of you about our platform and we're going to go through this kind of quickly so nifty arcade has built a platform that allows for revenue sharing marketplace and templated deck purchasing so i'm going to take you through it real quick we're actually going to launch that's right the, that doesn't even sound like english can you try that one more time it like <laughs> templated deck building like just just speak to me as plainly as you can what are the two things that that this platform does yeah so what number one what what it's what it's looking to do is actually allow people who have decks of cards right so for example i've got a gold i've got a deck that i can play in gold right i've got let's say i've got you know the fire splinter i've got the death chaos legion splinter i've got a few splinters and i don't want to rent them on the marketplace right i actually want to combine all of it and just give it to a player kind of like a scholarship and i want them to be able to play it well that's what the platform allows for right basically i as a deck owner you know, of, of multiple cards, I can create a deck and then I can actually go and allow other people to use that deck. Um, an example done here, we actually had a dog on there to do some testing for us, but you can see here that this is my personal deck. So I've got some Splinterlands, you know, I've got some Chaos Legion cards in here, some of the rewards cards and some of the Chaos Legion deck. And I actually lent this deck to somebody and I can make money from lending this deck, 
right? And so that's kind of the first piece, right? And now the second piece is we're actually going to allow people to purchase pre-configured decks instead of purchasing individual cards on the marketplace. But before I move on, Agrod, I wanted to make sure that I answered your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, so you're using like a little bit of lingo in there at the beginning. I just want to make sure that everybody knew in plain English what you do. And it sounds like I could take a deck and rather than rent individual cards, I can rent out the entire deck to somebody and, and share revenue with them. And it also sounds like if I'm a guy that has some money and I'd, I'd like to buy cards, but maybe I'm new or don't know exactly what I'm doing, I can get a pre-built deck and then immediately turn around and put that deck on the market so that it's kind of a way for, you know, people that want to have a stake in here and get going, not to have to like figure out the entire ecosystem, but just kind of like come in and be like, I, I believe in this product. I think it's pretty cool. I'd like to dip my toe in the water. Uh, give me a couple of silver and, and diamond decks. Let's see how they do or compare. And then uh, let's go rent them out to some of our buddies. And, right. you know, like I, I, I've personally opened probably 50,000 packs, maybe more. And well, combining cards and doing all that, it, it can be a lot of work. And especially if you don't quite feel comfortable doing that kind of work, uh, not only does it take a lot of time, but it can be confusing. So um, I can definitely see how what you guys are doing would immediately take the work out of a, a whale's existence and make it so that I can just, you know, buy some decks and buy some cards and get this stuff out there immediately and, and really not have to put in the lion's share of work, but to start, you know, checking this thing out a little bit more passively to begin. Absolutely. Yeah, I think one of the one of the benefits is that you don't have to, like you said, one of the cool things about like trading card games is there's generally like an out of the pack playing deck where you can just like out of the box play with your friend at a certain level of competitiveness. Um, and that's that's difficult to do with Splinterlands, frankly, uh, just because you have to kind of know what you're getting into before you even get into it. And so we're trying to solve that problem for players um, and also for for whales, like you said, any uh, institutional capital or anything that or anybody wants to come in, even guilds that want to come in, like uh, asset acquisition strategy, like formulating, adding, like building a deck. We all know we've all been there. Like it's it's not necessarily easy, um, but once you you know with our one click solution, you can you can buy you know one deck type per per rank if you wanted to, and just get them on the marketplace and direct rental to scholars or your friend or uh, just somebody random on the marketplace. So that's that's kind of the idea. I mean, I could even see this as like a vanity play, right? Like if I'm a company and I own, you know, some kind of business and I want to get marketing out to the people that are part of the Splinterlands community, you know, rather than trying to like buy advertising, I could go get a couple decks and play with them and earn with them. And while that's happening, and you know, I could be running a guild and getting my guild up at, at high levels so that people have to interact with me. So, you know, first kind of companies that come to mind might be like an energy drink. Or you know might be Absolutely. might be some kind of computing thing, and here they could just come in and you know they don't miss, like the marketing manager might not want to like play thirty decks, but they could get thirty decks off the shelf, put them all into the same guild, find thirty different scholars or jocks to to manage the decks, and and off you go. You have like a custom uh, vanity guild that hopefully can compete at a high enough level to to really gather attention to to what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so that's that's the high level of what you're doing. Um, there's there's some features in this that I actually think are pretty impressive, uh, like being able to track all the different assets across a couple of different ways. You want to yeah. you want to walk us through that a little bit? Go ahead, Tyler. Yeah, definitely. So the last two things in here, obviously, we can <clears throat> excuse me, we can allow people like we talked about to do revenue share deck rentals, and we can allow for deck purchasing. But that's not the only thing. The idea is that the platform actually allows you to see everything you own in the Splinterlands ecosystem. So for example, here, I can track multiple, I can track multiple accounts, actually, I can see all the crypto, all of the NFTs, and then the total value, right. And so to keep it quick, guys, basically, I can put multiple accounts on here, and I can track them, right. I've got two accounts on here with, you know, one account is $7,000 of cards, one account is $3,600 worth of cards on it. And I can see all of that in one place. And it kind of allows me to track everything in the Splinterlands ecosystem. Yeah you know, all my crypto and all my NFTs and tokens. And the last thing is I can actually everything that I earned over the last 30 days. And so here's what's pretty cool. We have an account on here that has earned 
We have one account that's earned about $170 worth of cards, uh, excuse me, worth of SPS cards, packs in the last 30 days, which is kind of crazy. This person's playing at, you know, a high level diamond champion. So that's the platform. Any questions, Aggie? Yeah. So is it is it just for the whales or if I'm like a minnow or a dolphin and I want a deck to play, am I, is this only for the, for the whales or is it also for the people that want to be operating the decks? Yeah, that and that's what gets really important about this platform, Aggie. The whole reason that we built this was to solve what we call the capital as a constraint problem. We we at Nifty Arcade run a scholarship program, and there are tons of people in developing countries that want to play Splinterlands but don't have the capital to do so. And so the idea is that I, if I own some assets, I can actually put them on there and somebody else can come play with them, right? So I, as a player who own no cards and have no cards to my name, can come on here and can play with somebody else's assets. Or even if I do have some and I want to try to play at a higher level, I can come on here and do so as well. Now, are, are there rules around the pricing? Do you force somebody to pay this much or you have to give that percent or is it totally free market like how do you how do you determine you know if i work with a jockey or a scholar you know what how much do i have to share with them and can i set it differently for the different decks i might own yeah yes you can that's a fantastic question so here's my personal deck that i've lent out to a scholar right and you can see that we're doing a 50% split here. But I actually see things going a little differently in the future. I think lenders are gonna get it kind of higher rates, especially as scholars or you know jockeys want to play with high level decks, maybe they'll take lower percentages. It's gonna be interesting, but it's free market. So the thing that I can do is I can come in and I can determine at what rank people are playing, what percentage I want from them. And so I can create that and customize all of that. How do you do that platform. when there's there's SBS that you get staked and then there's NFTs that you earn? How, how are you calculating that? And how, how frequently is somebody getting paid as they're part of this? Yeah, great question. So thanks to you guys, actually, we're actually able, you know, Matt and the and the dev team and Hardpoint over there are actually building an endpoint for us so that we can plug in and we can manipulate the staked SPS or not manipulate. I don't think it's a good word, but distribute the staked SPS accordingly. So if I have a 50 50 split, it's being built so that we can actually access that staked SPS, give it to the lender and let the borrower keep you know, whatever's left. And as it pertains to cards and everything else, what the system does is it actually calculates everything that's earned on an account on a daily basis. And the borrower sends everything back to the lender on a daily basis by approving the keychain or approving a pop-up in the keychain. Okay. Yeah. If you guys aren't familiar, the, it kind of works like beneficiary rewards uh, for, for posts on Hive. So that, you know, you could set somebody as a 10% beneficiary and then after your post is getting awards, 10% would go to the beneficiary. So you, if you're on Hive, you might you might recognize some of that. And uh, now we're now we're implementing that into Splinterlands across the board. And uh, Nifty Arcade is really one of the first groups to, to take advantage of it. Uh, to me, it, it's a totally slick tool. I'm personally planning on putting some decks up. I need to get out of this this week or two because they're so freaking busy. But once I have a moment to kind of sit down and and get my decks arranged, I, I definitely plan on putting them onto Nifty Arcade and and seeing yeah. how do I, um, not just how do I get a return, but you know, I, I it, to me, I really want to get these, uh, you know, especially after the the way that the rewards are changing, Prop Thirty Four is going live. Uh, we're getting it's it's getting so that the the most valuable or the highest ranked card sets. Are going to get the most value in the game and it and i think that's going to drive a lot of like decision making so i definitely want to see uh you know can i make some high level decks can i get them run by some scholars and then you know how just especially with the new reward system just how much can we crank it because i think if we could tell some good stories about that it's definitely gonna it's definitely gonna attract some people to this ecosystem yeah so, I mean, that's a good segue into kind of maybe to, to end this off uh, is, you know, what we're trying to do right now is as we're kind of waiting for that endpoint to be available, we're like honing in the functionality of everything else. You know, this is ready to go essentially uh, once that endpoint's there. And so we're already taking, we have kind of a supply and demand problem. We have plenty of like lots of demand as far as like people that we've already spoken to. Uh, and the supply is going to be limited in the sense that we'll probably only have about two to 300 
uh, accounts, you know, 150 to, to 300 accounts, depending on, you know, who decides to move their, their stuff over here on the platform uh, to be rented. Um, so we're kind of putting a wait list together. So we have a, a wait list on our, our website. So if you want to learn more about what we do, um, we're going to be updating our website with some of this new functionality that we just launched. I mean, you guys are probably the first, this community is the first to see see this stuff uh, out in the wild. So um, you can visit niftyarcade.io and put your name in the in the wait list and we'll, we'll get you guys all the information you need to, to kind of get going on this. And then when, once we're done with this and we got this up and running for Splinterlands, could, do you see this operating for other games as well? Could you see this with, with Genesis League? Yeah, so that's actually, we've already had a great conversation with John um, and uh, I, I know we've uh, kind of talked to a couple other team members too about, you know, the great thing about this is we're, we're familiar with the code base. Uh, we can kind of uh, scale across the the, old, the other games. So we're, we're really hoping as far as once we kind of better understand the playability of Tower Defense and Genesis League and, um, you know, some of the other games uh, that have been uh, announced, like we're, we're excited to kind of like see where that, uh, where that takes us uh, with this platform. But yeah, that's, that's our first priority is getting, getting those games on this platform as soon as they're, as soon as they're live and ready to go. Awesome. Um, all right. Where can, where can people find you? How, if they got questions, where should they go? Who do they ask? Where do they, where, where do we do this? Yeah, uh, NiftyArcade.io. Oh, well, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah, NiftyArcade.io is a great place. And we're also looking to get uh, feedback directly about the platform. So we're hoping to, like, have more conversations with just community members and see, like, are we solving this problem correctly? So you can reach out to us on Discord. Uh, B. Steele, he's in the Discord right now, and he's uh, he's a great person to reach out to, and he'll connect us. Yeah, and we should work with uh, Liam, and we can go get together kind of like a uh... – a, a dedicated time, you know, not just like 10 minutes on the, on the town hall here, but like really walking people through signing up and all that. We can host that in the Splinterlands discord and help you guys get, get off to a start. So yeah, and we're, we're, one the, we're one of the sponsors at uh splinter fest. So come and see us there in Las Vegas too. We'll be, we'll be there in force. So we're excited to, to see y'all there. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, guys. Well, I'm really excited to meet you in person. I will be there at splinter fest. It would be hard to imagine me not going, but I'll be there. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to meeting you guys again in person and uh should be yeah. good. There's a, there's nine VIP passes left. Uh, and I can tell you that's probably a card that you guys are going to want. Just hint, hint. It's pretty awesome. Uh, general missions passes. There's plenty of those. So if you haven't gotten your Splinter Fest ticket, you definitely want to make that happen. So thanks Nifty Arcade. Thanks for being on tonight. Uh, really exciting that project. Exciting. And, and I'm personally planning on getting some decks up there. So if you're a scholar, please be sure to reach out to Nifty Arcade and let's get a let's make sure that there's somebody waiting for the deck when uh, when I get it up there. Thanks, fellas. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, we'll see you soon. All right, next up, I want to go uh, invite Playground Labs. So um, hopefully, we can see Sam here in just a second. Sam, are you there? Hey, Eddie. How's it going? It's going really well. Uh, what is Playground Labs and who are you? <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, so I uh, guess I'm Sam. So I'm a partner over at HiveMind Capital. We raised a little bit over a billion earlier this year. And I also run Playground Labs. So that's my dev arm. So over there, I house all my engineers, my game devs, those types of folks who build some really, really neat Web3 gaming infrastructure and actual games. Um, so yeah, so we're, we're here today to chat about our biggest infrastructure piece to date, which is the Capital DAO. Uh, and so, Aggie, I'm, I'm happy to you know dive into it a little bit deeper here if if, uh, if you want me to go at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what is Capital DAO? And what what is this project? Love it. Yeah. So, uh, guys, when I when I talk about this project, what I want you to imagine is just a solution to enable guilds, uh, large firms, institutions, people to operate at massive, massive capital scale within Web3 gaming in a perfectly game agnostic and chain agnostic fashion. So this product is currently completely live. And what it does is it basically enables you to go in with a wallet full of assets and then seamlessly delegate those out to managers who then will delegate those assets out again to other players. So it's this idea of hierarchical delegation. It's you're building a real organization with real levels of different permissions throughout that entire organization. Uh, and so this is super, super important for massive institutions like hedge funds, for example who do deploy capital actively into games like Splinterlands, like Axie, et cetera, who need this type of organizational overhead in order to op like uh, operate accurately. Uh, How, and so, who, yeah, go ahead. Who, who are the people that they'd even delegate that to? Yeah, like... so right now, you know, if you um, if you chat with, for example, Axie guilds, right? The way it normally works uh, is that you have some series of assets 
and you sit next to some feller who temporarily holds your MetaMask keys or your Ronin keys. And then he then passes those into a different wallet. And then that person eventually plays. There's a ton of op steps. It's a complete mess. You have to trust other people with your keys and it's, it's not smooth. So what we've done is we've actually found a way where, again, completely game agnostically, regardless of whether it's Splinterlands, Axie, or anything else that comes out, you can work it from one common UI and using that same system of hierarchical delegation, you can pass down permissions from an admin who owns the assets and never ever loses access to their keys or has to give them to anyone else down to a manager and then down to a player. Okay. So when you get like, again, who, who would these managers be? How do this, like, are, are you actively recruiting them? Does the hedge fund bring their own? Like, how do you, how do you figure out who that is? Is that a paid position? Is that a volunteer position? Is it a, is it just like a member of the guild that the hedge fund runs? Like, What's, what's that structure even look like? Yeah, great question. Most people just use members of their Discord. Uh, to be honest, managers that we've seen, um, it's a, a really talented player. The way that our software works is it basically just enables you to trustlessly delegate control. So the manager can't ever steal the assets or move the assets out of some location that they're not allowed to, which means that you can then seamlessly pay that manager with, say, a cut of earnings. So for example, in the Splinterlands case, concretely, what you could say is that if you delegate your entire set of assets, let's say you're a guild, you have 100,000 Splinterlands cards, you don't want to spend time making decks. What you do, you could either go to Nifty Arcade, which is also a great solution, that was a really neat one, or what you can do is within our solution, you can delegate control of all of those over to a manager. That manager cannot transfer out or steal those cards, but what they can do is they can assemble decks and then sub-assign those to a player, and then the player will go play the game. And what happens is, let's say that 90% of the player's earnings go and are they're split between the guild and the player themselves, and then 10% would go and stay with that manager. And the really, really core component of it is that because it's trustless, because the admin retains control of the keys 100% of the time, you can nominate anyone. And that means that there's, there's no reason you shouldn't be choosing your best player in your Discord. You shouldn't just be randomly choosing someone that you've potentially never met before, but you know they have totally killer scores. That person should be your manager every single time. And so we see it really opening up a lot more possibility for people to be, you know, uh, I don't want to call it a pro gamer outright, but essentially, you know, becoming the pro in their community and getting paid to do it, just teaching other people. So where are you in the development process? Like, are you just starting this? Have you been around for 10 years? Like, what? tell, tell me about the product itself and what, what stage you're at. Yeah, of course. So the product is actually currently live. Uh, it's operational in Pegaxi, Axie, and Crypto Unicorns, all three of those have different delegation environments so that we could prove out the use case. We're going to be heading over into Splinterlands here momentarily, so you guys should definitely keep your eyes peeled for that, because at that moment, we've also partnered with the largest guild in the world, name to be disclosed in a week or so, uh, you know, to accurately bring some of these systems online so that really, really massive players like that have access to the same type of user experience and operational scale that they already have inside of our application in other ecosystems. So what, what, what do you, who, who's the perfect customer? Is it the, is it the hedge fund? Is it the, the giant guild? Like who, and do you already have networks of these people? Like how many, how many people are already part of this ecosystem? Who's like, I don't need like a list of, of, of names, but I want like what types of customers are in your, are in your platform? Yeah, that's a great question. Eddie. So we have folks who frankly have as little as 10 scholars worth of assets who still find this extremely, extremely useful. And the reason is, is because you don't have to manage it yourself. That's the key, is you can pass off the entire operation to someone else seamlessly. So you just pick a random person in your community who can really nail it and pass them 100% of the operations and let it run autonomously. So our key clients are you know, both the largest guilds in the world, as well as, frankly, anyone who just wants to have game assets but doesn't want to deal with the finicky bits of knowing every part of a game in and out because they're hard on purpose. Games are supposed to be tough. Awesome. Uh, anything that I missed that you want to share or, or uh, any other, any other pieces here? No, I, I, I want to keep the focus tonight on Splinterlands mostly. I know you guys have a killer roadmap here coming out. The only thing that I would really say and highlight, you know, is that frankly, we're, we're stoked to be partnering with the Splinterlands community here and bringing it in. Um, because we really do see Splinterlands, you know, obviously you guys have accrued just a massive, massive following with a ton of players. And from the folks that we've chatted with, with the major guilds and some of the funds even that have deployed assets over here, we think it's going to be a really, really promising application to show exactly how important it is to have this level of hierarchical delegation. And then same question, you know, we're getting into Genesis League uh, and having different sports games. One of these days, we'll probably have some like social casino games, maybe even some entertainment games. 
Uh, are you building this in a way where it will be agnostic to what game that our players are playing and that you could be owning assets in a variety of these different plat uh, in the, not a variety of the different games and still operate all of that within your platform? A hundred percent. So even today, even today, I, uh, we have Crypto Unicorns, Axie, and Peg Axie all completely live within one common UX. And our time to onboard a new game is getting shorter and shorter as we drive towards what we call a standardized game SDK. Eventually, what it's going to look like is game developers will actually be able to add their own games uh, seamlessly to the platform. And so the dev time on our side, on the core engineering side, will be reduced dramatically. And so, you know, Nets, at the end of the day, folks that are already operating within the Splinterlands ecosystem in those games, I actually anticipate those games may even be able to be added, uh, you know, maybe just with a week or two of dev at most after we get the core Splinterlands engine online. Pretty awesome. All right. Well, uh, stoked to have you here. Stoked to have you guys owning assets. Uh, glad to see this is the kind of like bridge work that we're trying to do with other communities. And uh, I'm excited to see what what whales, what guilds, what groups you pull in here and uh, looking forward to help you guys grow and, and have access to our community. How, how, how should people find you if they're if they're interested in uh, in this approach of sort of like large capital management? You know, where do they find you? Where do they go? And and. What are the next steps that they should be thinking about? Yeah, head over to uh, capital.gg. That's capital with a K. Uh, you can actually use our app today. I mean, it's live already. I will warn you, there is a small amount of engineering setup, so definitely come prepared for that because you are self-custodying the keys. We do not see the keys. Um, but yeah, just head over to capital.gg and give it a whirl. Uh, we'd love to have your feedback. And next week, I believe we will be doing a massive card opening event in Splinterlands, guys. So nice. don't miss that because we'll probably end up giving out a couple of them too. So you definitely want to be there. Yeah, if there's if there's streaming support or if you're looking for just make sure that Liam knows everything about what you're doing so that, you know, we're we're broadcasting that to our players and everybody's in the loop. Will do. No, I love it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm actually stoked to open them. Every time I open a card back, it gives me a little hint of joy. So I'm, I'm excited to be opening so many. All right. Awesome. Well, this is a uh, Playground Robs. It's Capital Dow. And um, I'm really excited to have Sam here. Thanks so much. And looking forward to seeing what you guys build. Of course, guys. Thanks a bunch for having us on. Have a good night here. Rock on. All right, let's go do some words with wizards. So those were our special guests, and we talked to, to Nifty Arcade and Playground Labs. You can hear the sort of like, uh, you know, ways that we're trying to get uh, people that, that you know, are holding large amounts of assets and figuring out how to manage them. Um, so we got, we got a couple things. I guess, Richard, anytime that you're on, I always want to start and just try to figure out um, you know, high level, how are we doing? Like I, I've been describing this as developer Valhalla for a little bit. Are we on track? Are you guys doing okay? Are you insane? Are we, are we staying up every night, all night? Like what's, give us just like a flavor of what it's like in the, in the dev halls right now. Um, Valhalla. I <laughs> know uh, I'm really busy. Uh, the whole team has really been pushing really hard. We have a lot of things going out as the community knows. So the team's pushing really hard. We have um, been actually, you know, there's been a couple of us that have had work over the weekend and stuff to get stuff done, get set up for this week. So definitely big hats off to those team members that are helping push and pull and get this done. But we're excited. Everybody's excited with what's coming out and the products and um, the all Roonies and Tower Defense and Rip Watchers. There's just like a, a tremendous amount of excitement on the team for what's going out. Yeah, there's a, there's a whole bunch of questions around Tower Defense. And I'm assuming that that's a... Uh... So are are we set to go live tomorrow? Is that is that still happening? It's still finishing up uh, QA. So we're not fully 100% there, but we're enough there that I'm fairly certain we're going to get it out and get it live just as we've been promising at uh, our maintenance window tomorrow. And then we'll have a countdown page and then the tower defense goes live at four o'clock Eastern tomorrow. And yeah, we're cutting a little tight, but it should be good. Um, are there are there certain things that you want to kind of talk about for that? How, just like, um, you know, let's assume that somebody is brand new to hearing about this. What is a tower defense game, just real high level? And then, you know, what, what are we offering tomorrow? Uh, absolutely. So tower defense was a offshoot product that we're developing on the Splinterlands platform, another game uh, totally built into the Splinterlands platform. It uses the same website uses the same wallets and we're uh, partnered with Double Coconut, uh, who is a studio that's done several, quite a few different uh, mobile games. And so they've been working really hard with uh, with us for the last couple of months. So we're really excited to get the pre-sale live. What's gonna happen at the pre-sale is we are gonna be selling our 
packs that we, we haven't finalized a name, whether they're packs or chests or crates or whatever we're going to call it. We're still uh, kind of pushing and shoving our way out into the market with it. So we're really excited about it. But there's going to be 250,000 packs that are going to be available. And each one of those packs will have five. Uh, either they'll be towers or spells, which are really exciting. And if you provide, if you participate in the pre-sale, you'll have a percentage chance for each pack you buy, a 0.2% chance of getting our promo hero that will also be available. So that promo hero is only going to be available for pre-sale and will not be available ever again. So it's going to be a pretty cool ex uh, exclusive. Um, we're pretty excited about tower defense because it's not just your normal tower defense. We're actually looking to do very interesting and different things with it in the Web3 space. Um, and we're interested in taking a lot of the things that we've been building for the last four years and applying them to this whole new game that we're developing in the platform. And a lot of these things have to do with, uh, you know, staking requirements for earnings. So you're going to have to stake SPS to actually earn SPS. Um, things like you're going to have to stake your uh, towers and spells and heroes into the game and have them locked up in the game to be able to use them. We're also looking at doing things that uh, each of the towers, the more towers you own, the more spells you own, the more heroes you own, the more you can play the game, the more you can earn. We're moving kind of towards a model where each of those items have their own uh, energy and they have their own earning capability. So if you want to earn more, you don't you just buy more of the towers and you're able to earn more. So it's really exciting to see some of these new features hitting in this new platform. Okay. So on the on our Rift Watchers sale, we had a couple little like wonky things happen. The the biggest one being like um to me the it went directly from the 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 pre-sale into the general sale how is that going to work for tower defense can you can you walk us through some of the logistics of like um not just the pre-sale but sort of like how what happens at the end of the pre-sale how does that work so we were talking about you're basically in, you know kind of indirectly referring to how rift watchers went where we went we sold out in less than 100 seconds and we went straight from pre-sale to general sale and then there was a lot of confusion for people purchasing which for which where they were purchasing. So we you know you put together and several team members contributed to a post where we kind of shared our thoughts on how we could approach it better. One of the big things we're looking at is trying to create a gap between the pre-sale and also the general sale to allow players a time to realize which segment they're buying in and making sure that players really truly understand exactly what they're getting for their money and their crypto. Um, with tower defense, sort of ironically, is that the pre-sale tomorrow is the only thing that's going to be available. There's only going to be 250,000 packs. It will not flip immediately owing to general sale. So if we do sell out tomorrow, which you never know, last week sold out in less than 100 seconds. So pretty excited to see what happens tomorrow. But we will be actually launching the general sale next week. But that's not because we wanted to. That's because the development. We have a lot of fun things that we're putting in for the general sale page that are not ready yet from a development standpoint. So quite literally, that is going to come out next week. But if it was live, the goal is to have minimum of one hour between the pre-sale and the um, general sale. And going forward, we're looking at trying to incorporate that into future launches of our products where there's a delay and where players are notified that the pre-sale is over. And then there's another countdown clock that shows up. And then when it actually goes live, people can participate in the general sale. So there's just a really clear distinction between the pre-sale and the general sale for players. Um at the very end, if there's, say, only 500 packs left and I put in an order for 575, what will happen then? Uh, your order would get rejected. So and, we we will only be selling the number of packs that are actually up for sale. Okay. So this, this thing ends at 250 or 250,000 come hell or high water. Is that That's, right? That is absolutely correct. Okay. And then, um, so the... Uh, there's not there's not a whole lot of these, right? Two hundred and fifty thousand is pretty small. That's that's half the number of the the Rift Watchers pack. Um, you know, with our, I guess, are are we going to try to? This might be a question for Liam. Are we going to go do another like pre-sale uh, powwow and just make sure that right before the sale goes live, we're all hanging out together again? Is yeah, I'll yeah. yeah. be ready. Have an event set up for it, so I'll put that in the chat in a second here. Perfect. Yeah. I mean, I'm really excited about that. It was, it was awesome. We had like 400 people here the last time. So uh, excited to be able to go do that and, and hang out with all the people again. Cause I, I know that 
It definitely got me hype being like, oh shit, there's 400 other people trying to buy these Rip Watcher packs right now. And that's just the people that were hanging out in Discord, which is which is obviously not our entire our entire audience. Um, are there other things that you want to talk about for, for tower defense? I mean, uh, have we leaked the name yet? I mean, Matt's here, so we could definitely leak it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't want to leak it yet. We, we gotta, we gotta make sure we get all the legal stuff lined up. But yeah, okay. we're very close uh, on the name, and also the name will lead us into a logo for it. So we're right now the web page is just going to show Splinterlands Tower Defense, but we do have a name picked out, and we're pretty excited about it. And we're also excited about getting the logo up. Um, hopefully, internally, I can leak that we're really shooting to have both of those pulled together by Splinterfest. So hopefully, that will be something fun. We're planning on announcing the name and the logo at Splinterfest and also showing off additional uh, art and more game concepts and having a great discussion with our partners, Double Coconut, at Splinterfest. Um, one of the sessions um, at Splinterfest is going to be dedicated to Tower Defense, where myself and several of the team members and Double Coconut are going to sit down and talk more about it, go to deeper dive on it. So pretty excited about that. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty stoked for this. I, I've played like a ton of Bloons Tower Defense in my life. I'm not ashamed to talk about all the of the balloons that pop with monkeys. Um, and yeah, it was certainly like any time that I've traveled ever, you know, I could be on a plane for like four hours and I'm just sitting there playing balloons the whole time. That's like a great way to to pass the time. So looking forward to to being able to do that for um for a Splinterlands game. And instead of just like wasting all my time, I might actually like be earning that entire time. I I, I think that's pretty exciting. Yeah, I'm, I'm really. I was gonna say one more last thing is I. I just keep saying this because you know when we when we concepted the tower defense uh, genre and we started talking about how could we do this with Web three, one of the things that the team kind of came up with was this whole concept of press your luck with tower defense, and I am really excited about it because it's going to be one of the first times I feel like in in where you're, you can keep accumulating more rewards and the more skill you have. You keep pressing your luck, but there's this whole idea of risk associated with playing another wave in the game. And we kind of talked about like this whole thing of when you play a wave of tower defense, if you you're winning rewards, real crypto rewards, and if you lose or you get damaged, instead of it just being like, oh, I got some damage, you're losing rewards. You're gonna actually have your rewards taken away from you as part of the game. So you truly are defending your rewards as you play through this game. I'm really excited about that dynamic, and I think it's gonna be really exciting for the community. And for streamers to be playing that and to be like just build that tension where it's not just like oh just throw down some towers and i'm done and check out and i get some rewards like we're really trying to drive a real push towards having the games be exciting engaging and really having players get emotionally involved with the outcome they're super excited about that yeah it's pretty pretty exciting stuff there um all right anything anything else that you want to add for tower defense I mean, we got all kinds of questions coming up, so we'll be talking more about it. But uh, yeah, no, super excited about myself. Um, really, really excited to see it get live. All right, so um, come on back tomorrow because uh, we're doing our our um, our tower defense sale. The pre-sale begins tomorrow. It's at four p.m. Eastern, and uh, if you're hoping to go get some packs, the uh, the supply of these things is really freaking tight. So, uh, best of luck. You know, this is this is a hundred percent one of those moments where. We all got to push and shove because there's there's definitely not enough for everyone. Okay, sweet. Um, hey, Matt. So we uh, we were also, we were just talking about the whole tower defense thing, but that's not the only product that we're dropping this week. We're also dropping Roonies. What the hell is a Rooney, and why should I be as excited as you are excited about them? Yeah. What 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 is dropping this week is going to be the uh, whitelist sale to you know reserve your rooney for later um we're planning the actual launch like the mint of of the rooney uh, and i've been told also that rooney is the uh plural of rooney so it's like deer uh so you know, i'm gonna try to to not say roonies and, and have nate make a face at me um but uh yeah, so the whole idea of Rooney is that um, it's a generative NFT or a PFP project, which is like, you know, that's that's kind of the biggest thing in the NFT space these days and, you know, for, for a while now since the original like CryptoPunks um, and now there's Bored Apes and there's all these other things. And the whole idea is each one 
is completely unique and you know everybody gets to show off their unique nft in their profile pictures and their avatars and their uh you know physical stickers and pins and all that stuff so that's something um you know obviously that's something we don't have in splinterlands you know you could have your uh your frost giant or your you know um Yodenzaku or whatever, but yours looks and is just the same as everybody else's, which is which is how every trading card game I've ever played worked, whether it's Hearthstone or Magic or, or whatever. Um, but we kind of had the idea that it'd be really cool. Like, why why couldn't we make one of our cards be a generative NFT where everyone gets a random, unique version of it? Uh, and then you know the the card itself will will be the same in the game, right? It'll have the same stats, you know, just um, because it's the same card, but the actual image that will be shown when you play your Rooney on the battlefield will be your unique Rooney image, um, and then it'll be different than everybody else's, which I think is just a really cool concept. Um, and then not only that, you know, we we also see this as as one of the best ways I've seen, you know, since we started this game to really try to market this to the larger nft community and audience that's that's mostly you know lives on ethereum and open sea um or that's where most of the value is at least right now uh, we've we've never you know kind of in the history of splinterlands really broken into that audience very much um and so this is an opportunity we're going to do the mint on on ethereum on open sea so you're going to need uh ether to to participate in it um and it's going to be just the the familiar regular thing that everyone in the NFT space is used to. Uh, John from you know 16 bit has lined up a, a huge series of AMAs with different NFT communities uh, to talk about this project, drum up excitement. Um, so not only is the concept really cool in my opinion, um, just for for Splinterlands players, but it's it's also the best opportunity that I think that we have um, to really get a lot of new people with a lot of capital into this game uh, from that from that bigger community. So I'm really excited about it from both both areas, both ways of looking at it. Um, you know, should, should we talk about the sale a little bit? The white yeah, list? please do. Yeah. So the on Thursday, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern, we're planning on launching the uh, the whitelist sale on the Splinterlands website. Um, there's going to be 6,500 Rooney NFTs uh, in total, um, and 2,000 are reserved for the Splinterlands community to to get to. So if you get a whitelist spot in the sale on Thursday, it will reserve that you will be able to get a Rooney NFT. So, you know, it won't like be able to sell out. You won't be able to get yours. Um, you'll have a, a period of time after the mint starts where you can redeem your whitelist spot. Um, so you'll be, you'll need to have an Ethereum wallet address that, that you control the keys to. So not like through Coinbase or Binance or something, but through like MetaMask or a, another self custody wallet. We'll offer, you know, an FAQ and a bunch of instructions and help for people. Um, and, and you'll buy the, uh, the whitelist spot using vouchers, which will get burned. Um, so again, it's just value ultimately going to, to uh, SPS in this case. And uh, the mint, each Rooney is going to cost $500 priced in Ether when they mint. But if you get a whitelist spot uh, through the game website using vouchers, you'll not only reserve your spot, but you'll also get a 50% discount. So you'll be able, if you spend the 100 vouchers, you get a whitelist spot you'll be able to mint your Rooney for $250 worth of Ether uh, instead of 500 when the mint starts later in October. So it's going to be a really good opportunity um, to kind of give a lot of these out to our community, give them first dibs basically and a cheaper price than, than everybody else is going to get. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Um, and there, so the, the Rooney has a special ability too. What's the, what's the kind of cool ability that's unique to Rooney's right now? Rooney. Yeah, the, the card in the game, um, I think we shared the stats for it last time, right? Yeah, we, we talked about that. I don't remember, you know, what we shared when with so much going on. Um, you know, we tried to make it pretty much as as like as much of a staple card. Uh, so it's a neutral legendary. They're all going to be max level. Um, and the it has a new ability called Rebirth, which is basically a self-resurrect. So when it dies, uh, it will bring itself back to life at at with only one health. Um just like the the resurrect ability would, uh, 
and that can only happen once per battle. So you could even pair it with other, since it's a neutral card, you could pair it with other re resurrect uh, cards or summoners. And, um, you know, it, it'll rebirth itself the first time it dies, and then it could even be resurrected again uh, by by another card if it if it dies after that. So it'll have some some pretty good staying power on the battlefield. And then, you know, we, we made a post with a lot more details and the full stats of the cards. Uh, so everyone can take a look at that. Um, but we, you know, we hope this to be like, this is, I've never seen this done in any trading card game. I've never seen a trading card game where you could get a card that was one of one totally unique uh, visually. Um, so I think that's, that's just going to be really cool. And we, we look at the Rooney uh, as sort of like our, our, our trial getting into this whole world. Can we sell, can we do a big, you know, exciting NFT project on Ethereum and OpenSea? Uh, we have a kind of unique concept a way for how it'll be sort of bridged into the game, but still allowing all the trading and, and buying and selling to happen on OpenSea and Ethereum. Um, and if this goes well, which each, I'm assuming it will just because of how cool it is, uh, kudos to the creative team for that. Uh, you know, we plan to do a lot more stuff with this model in the future. And then we also want like the, the Rooney to sort of be the, the, like the ticket or the, the, the entrance into all the future similar type of projects we do. So a lot of the utility of other generative NFT projects is they get you access to future stuff. Um, and we want Rooney to be that too. So we don't want it to be like, oh, you know, we launched Rooney. It's really cool. Um, and then we go launch a whole bunch of other things and then you know, that could be even more cool than the Rooney in the future. And then Rooney holders are like, well, you know, I wanted to be involved in these other cooler things. The Rooney will actually be your access to future to future things that are like that um, is, is kind of how we look at it. So if, if you have a Rooney and we do another generative NFT project, maybe on another platform or whatever, uh, you know, everyone who has a Rooney will get access to that. You know, maybe that's you know, that's the only access or that's early access or whatever it is. Um, we kind of see this as like the gateway to hopefully a whole new world of like integrations and cool stuff in the game. So uh, there's a fair number of uh, Monster Mavericks in our Discord group that are very concerned that just one whale is going to come in and scoop up all the Brunies and all the whitelist spots. What What are your thoughts on that? Do you think, is this a, is this a thing where one one whale will come in and just take all of them? we're putting in as many mitigation techniques as are reasonably possible to try to you know make it to give everyone a fair chance um but despite that my expectation is that those whitelist spots are going to sell out rather quickly um so if if you want one my hope is that everyone who's on there at at 2 p.m eastern on thursday um you know will be able to get a whitelist spot uh but if you wait potentially a few minutes you may not be able to um it's, it's not going to be the same as like the rift watchers pre-sale um you know things are going to be much more limited you can't just buy you know type in 2000 and click buy um but we're not going to go into the details about all the all the limitations we're trying to put in but um i would expect a very quick sellout there so if you want one you know i would be ready at the time when it launches uh but our hope is that you know um, everyone who's there and attempting to purchase at that time uh, will be able to get at, at least one whitelist spot. Okay. Uh, anything else you want to add about the Ringy project? Um, you know, one, one thing to know, and I think we're going to put out a post about this also, is like we're also going to have whitelist spots that we're going to be giving out, you know, on some of these AMAs that we're doing with other communities. Now, those won't come with the discount, so it'll be a full price whitelist spot. Um, but it's just, uh, you know, this is a, a big part of this project is the marketing and promotion that's going around it. A big part of the success of this project is not just how cool everyone's Rooney looks, but how many people we can get from the wider NFT community in. Um, so just, you know, just so everyone knows, you know, we, we will be reserving a number of whitelist spots also for these other communities that are going to be pushing this heavily to their audiences. Um, and, and the goal of mine is that, yeah, you know, there's there's a small number of these. They're relatively cheap. Uh, so we're not trying to say, like, how much money can we get from the sales of these? We're really trying to say, like, we get a, we get a, a reasonable amount of money from the sales. But then hopefully the real money comes from, you know, the resale. So we, we hope that the, the floor price of the Rooney go up significantly um, from the from the initial mint price and and 
you know, and there's lots of trading volume. And that's ultimately how we're going to get the visibility on OpenSea. Everyone like sorts by floor price and volume and all that stuff. So ultimately, we want the, as much of the value as possible to go back to the, the holders and the purchasers of this. So that's what we're, we're trying to do with this big marketing push that we're doing. Yeah, we try to, we try to do that with basically everything. It's, let's, let's allow these things to be affordable. And, you know, our hope is that over time, you know, that assets appreciate, but that, you know, the, the vast majority of that would go to the player, you know, and, you know, we take, we take some set amount of money at the beginning to go uh, operate our business and run this company and have products to sell. But um, that's a general theme for us that, you know, we, we come in at affordable and um, that all these products do well. Uh, anything else you want to add about Rooney's or Rooney? No, that's it. Um, you know, just be on at 2 p.m. Eastern on Thursday uh, if you want to get a whitelist spot. I mean, obviously, even if you don't get a whitelist spot, you may, you know, you sh you'll have the chance to just mint one during the mint um, when that goes live at the end of October. But if you want to reserve your spot, be on and be ready. Hey, so are we... Chatter, are we doing a live stream for the Rooney whitelist? Yep, we can definitely get one going for those. Sweet. Yeah. Cool. Uh, let's, let's, uh, what do we call those events? Would you just call it a, a, a pregame show or something? Yeah. Pregame show countdown, whitelist countdown. We got it. Oh, yeah. We already got it scheduled. It's already there. Yeah. Awesome. You guys are going to want to come join us for that and come meet uh, hundreds of other people that are competing for you for 2000 spots. It'll be awesome. All right. Um, well, so now, uh, like I said, either of those things could have been shows on their own and um, I'm running a little bit later, later than I would have wanted to. But um, even after talking about Rooney and even after talking about tower defense, there's still more that's going on at Splinterlands. Actually, there's still like a crap ton more that's going on. Um, so Mancer, why don't you talk to us about uh, brawls and what you've been doing there? Cause it like that, yeah, yeah, let's do Brawlhalla and um, you know, let's hopefully let's talk to Weirbeard and um and Cryptomancer and just kind of like do a rundown on all the things that are that are happening in the land of brawls. What's up, guys? All right, so um I'm gonna steal a bit of Nate's thunder today and show you guys some eye candy. Uh before I get to brawls, there's just one other cool thing that I wanted to show you. So um you all may be aware that one of the neat things about working for Splinterlands is that we get business cards that are designed by our endlessly awesome creative team to actually look like game cards. And they just finished working on mine. So I want to drop this in here so you can see what it looks like. Nice. Um, so nice. here comes uh, Cryptomancer. Let's stick that in. Nice. Oh, cool. There I, I like the little death skull. Are you are you part of the death splinter then? I am indeed. This very much follows my kind of um, fantasy persona of uh, my favorite death splinter. Um, it's kind of similar to the Cryptomancer card that I actually have in game. And here's what the, the actual business card itself looks like. I'm the dark blockchain wizard. Nice. That's pretty sick, and dude. For those of you with the discerning eye, there's a couple Easter eggs in the card image itself that kind of hints at my cryptocurrency background. Yeah. Um, so they knocked it out of the park with that one. I mean, whatever whatever company you guys in the audience work at, they're not as cool or as fun as us. I just need to Amen share that. to that. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to handing out some of the, the physical cards at Splinterfest itself. Nice. Okay, well, um, Moving on from that, tell us about like brawls. You know what? Right. So what are you brawls. guys working on? Okay, it's time to pull back the curtain a little bit and show you what brawls are actually going to look like. So, um, for SPS rewards for brawls, you will claim them in a very similar way to the the other SPS rewards that we have. So, first uh, screenshot here. Stick this in. So it will be like um, ranked rewards and also like the license rewards. So SPS earned from brawls will go to your unclaimed balance and then you'll go to the SPS management page and claim it here along with all the other rewards and that will uh, be claimed as staked SPS. And there's some other places where you can see um, 
kind of an estimate of how much SPS you're actually going to earn. So you know how there's the Brawl Rewards button that you can click on, and it shows you estimates of the different rewards. So that will also include um, the potential staked SPS that you can earn. And this will update as the Brawl progresses in the same way that Merits and Crown estimates do. And I wouldn't read too much into the actual number that you see in this screenshot here. This is from um, a test that I did with just a, a couple guilds and a, a couple uh, test accounts. So actual real numbers uh, will be considerably different from this. Um, you can also see it in the uh, tooltip that shows you how many guilds are in a particular tier. So I'll throw that in there. Um, so this will give you a way to, to see, well, is it going to be advantageous for my guild to move up into the next tier or not? So this tells you, given how many guilds are actually in that tier right now, what is the potential SPS pot available for each brawl that will happen in that tier? And um, there's a, another tool that you can also use to keep track of rewards. There will be this button, the SPS pool button. And when you click on that, that's going to open up a whole new screen, which will give you a detailed um, explanation of exactly how the SPS rewards are calculated and uh, all the numbers and everything that, that you uh, analytically minded folk like to see. Oh my God, that's uh, like nerd heaven. Yes, there is a lot going on in this screen. I'll just break down kind of the big major pieces. So you see there the monthly pool uh, of SPS rewards will start at 2.5 million SPS. And as per the SPS white paper, uh, rewards will decrease at a rate of 1% per month. And rewards will be distributed for a total of 65 months. So on this screen, you can see that we are in the first distribution months. And uh, the monthly pool will decrease to 2.475 million um, on October 10th, um, which is just a testing date, not a real date, by the way. And uh, I'm sure all of you are interested in the numbers for the pool allocations. So that 2.5 million SPS is broken down into a certain percent, um, a fixed amount that gets uh, reserved for each particular brawl tier. And that's for the entire month. And then that um, monthly amount gets divided by six, um, which is the average number of brawl cycles in a given month. And that will give you the SPS per tier per brawl cycle. And that's what this screenshot is showing here. Um, and then the text, you can read it on your own. The text explains exactly how the, the individual rewards are broken down. Now, a caveat about these numbers. So um, let me talk a bit about uh, the timeline and the plan for this going forward. So these numbers are what I personally uh, would like to see as the final numbers. Um, it was designed to be an exponential progression rather than a linear progression um, because of the way that uh, brawls take um, increasingly more effort to get into the higher tiers. It's not like ranked rewards where it's like, oh, a couple of weeks, I can get up to champion. No, no, no. Brawls, it takes months. Some of the top guilds have been working on, on brawls diligently um, every single brawl cycle for like a year to get to where they are. Um, so that the top of tiers get rewarded um, commensurate with that effort. Now, these numbers are not uh, completely finalized yet. What we are going to do, because we have SPS governance now, is we are going to put these numbers to a governance vote. So you guys will have the chance to weigh in and uh, decide as a community if uh, these are the numbers you want. Um, the actual SPS proposal is being uh, drafted um, I'm hoping that uh, we'll have that available um, later this week, but I don't know exactly when that's going to go out. should be sometime soon. Um, and then we'll have a vote to finalize the numbers. As far as the actual coding and when you're actually going to see this hit in game, um, the coding is just about finished. I'm, I'm doing final finishing touches and a whole bunch of testing right now before it goes into QA. And because we have to do the governance vote first, 
and then I'm going to be away in the U.S. for uh, Splinter Fest. Um, it's probably we're probably looking at uh, like a second half of October release date, something like that. So the priority is to get Rift Watchers up and the, um, the pre-sales that are starting this week, um, and then we'll have Splinter Fest, and then uh, Brawl SPS Rewards will be hitting um, once I get back from from Splinter Fest, and we do the SPS governance vote. So uh, that's that. Yeah, um, it's pretty exciting. I hope you guys are all as, ex as excited and enthusiastic about it as I am. I think it's going to be pretty awesome. How how close are you to code complete? So are, are, are we like waiting on final um, like final votes and proposals and this thing is otherwise coded or like what is there still a lot of work done before this thing is ready to go live? Coding is 99% done. It's got maybe like one or two days for me to finish off a bit of testing and fine tune a couple things, but it's basically done and we'll be ready for QA um, before I leave for the US. That's awesome. Uh, Weird Beard, we, we've been, we just talked a ton about all this development. How does this fit in your, in your brain? Are the, is this what the people are looking for? Is this what guilds are looking for? Does this fit into the, into the guild and tournament strategies that seem to be drawing more people? What do you think? Um, I think a lot of people look at it as a piece of a larger solution, right? Like we, this is like, a, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? This is something people are looking for, but I think it's definitely not the end all be all where we can just, oh, brawls go on the shelf. We don't have to do anything else with them. Um, you know, I think a, a lot of the stuff that we're talking about here is one of the main concerns people have, which is how do we get people to stop squatting in the lower tiers of brawls? And how do we influence them without forcing them to be like, no, you have to go up. Because with these brawl changes for the SPS dis distribution, um, you're you're dumb for not <laughs> for, for not moving up. Like it's it's just that kind of simple when you look at it because those numbers are crazy. And there's no other way, I think, to really communicate that to people that haven't seen kind of the value in brawls. Um, when you start looking at that huge prize pool and the distribution of it, it's nutty to think that like, oh, yeah, I don't need to pay attention to brawls. Like, that's just something I'm not involved in. Like, by passing on being involved in brawls, you are just giving up not only rewards, but just like so many things that are going to be coming down the pipeline. Yeah. Um. Does this so this is a part of what it, it sounds like the users want? Like, or were you heavily involved in communicating with Kirkamancer in terms of these are player desires? This was a high priority item. Like, was this was this whole development done in conjunction with players, despite players, because of players? How would you describe it? Um, I think it's it it happened on its own in two separate tracks. Like I didn't have to twist Cryptomancer's arm to do this. This was a thing that he started talking about. It was like, hey, players have also talked about doing this. What's up? Like a lot of it, I think, was when we look at what's happening in the brawls and like the changes that we kind of make to it internally, we already have a lot of the same desires. You know what I mean? Is what players also want to see. Um, I think the, the biggest aspect though, is that really building in the, uh, the ability to vote and put, have players choose those numbers of the tiers and everything like that. That's going to be something that I wish, you know, again, we could do for all kinds of things, um, which we'll, you know, eventually be able to do. Um, so I think it's like, it, it, it happened on its own track. I think, again, like I said, Cryptomancer has a very good handle of, what needs to be done with brawls a lot of it now is just okay uh how do we do it what's the you know what's the first step to get this done and then the one after that and the one after that rock on uh mancer anything else you want to add about about brawls and, and where we're going um so there's another brawl feature that uh, a lot of people have been wondering about and that is the plan to make um, the bloodstones and power stones available for purchase with vouchers instead of merits and uh, that's another change that's uh, nearly code complete um, i started working on that and then set that aside to do the brawl sps rewards which we judge to be a higher priority um, I can say that after Brawl SPS rewards are done, I want to go back and finish off that uh, change uh, for Bloodstones and Power Stones. So that will probably be coming next. And then we also want to take a look at fray composition. 
So I know there's been a lot of discussion about, uh, well, there's too many gold foil frays, or there's not enough of this fray, not enough of that fray. And, and uh, there's, there's generally some, uh, a bit of grumbling there. And I think there's definitely some things we can look at doing um, to fine tune the, the phrase at the different tiers. But we really need to have some more discussions internally on how we want that to, uh, to be sorted out. We need to arrive at a consensus for the best way of doing that. Um, so that'll also probably be, be coming up um, after I look at the, uh, the store change for vouchers. Yeah, and some of the other things too that we have on the, the docket, um, a lot of them are just like, I, I always preach it, quality of life stuff, man. Like if, as long as you keep your house in order, we're going to be doing just fine. Um, you know, small little things like the numbers and the big ideas are great. Getting these small details of like the, the mini pains that people feel every single day. Those are also, you know, big wins that may not seem like it on paper, but really are when you talk to players and what they want to see. Oh. Um, yeah, it feels like we're making progress in a lot of different ways here, fellas. Um, are we missing anything? Anything else that we want to talk about for tournaments or brawls? Oh, I got I'm if Cryptomancer's down, I got a whole list here because we're talking oh, Splitter Fest yeah, and tournaments. Oh, that's right. That's right. Um, so, uh, yeah, you can run with it. Go, all right, go for it, Weird Beard. Tell us all about the tournaments. Ooh, baby. All right. So, first, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I uh, before we talk about Splinter Fest, one thing, technically, two things that I do want to make mention of we are having a brawl hall on Friday, 9 a.m. EST. An event will be going out tomorrow in the Discord. We're going to be talking about the future of Rift Watchers in tournaments and brawls. How would you like to see them incorporated? Do we want to see, uh, you know, specific tournaments? What are the community really kind of hoping to see when it comes to this? Um, and, and just generally, I think having people get together and get excited about Rift Watchers and how it's going to affect tournaments, really. Um, along with that, while we're there, we are going to be announcing uh, the opening of the Splinterlands tournament partners list. Applications are starting on Friday. If you've ever wanted to be able to be on the white list for tournaments, to be able to generate more community tournaments, come and apply. Hang out with us at this town at this brawl hall on Friday. You can set that application. We're not going to be doing uh, actual like accepting of people until after Splinter Fest, uh, but we want to know who's interested <laughs> more than anything else. Um, and also another note, previous season that just finished 9,732 total participants in tournaments for the previous season. It's, yeah, our, it's, it's our fourth highest of the year. Um, it's down a little bit, but I'm telling you, like we're, we're, we're trending upwards consistently, which is, you know, really cool to be able to see. Um, cool. Do you want to talk Splinter Fest tournaments, Aggie? Yeah, go right ahead. All right. Tell us about them. First, big announcement. The three casters you're going to be able to see live casting our Splinter Fest tournaments are Luthien, Bulldog, and Aftersound. All three nice. live on a stage legends. desk. I know. We're all doing legends. On stage interviews. We're doing all kinds of awesome stuff there. Um, but really for those three players to be able to get behind the desk and cast the very first uh, ghost card tournament of ever the history of Splinterlands. Um, I I'm really excited to be able to see them get involved with that, especially Luthien. I love Luthien. Um, That's Luthien the Destroyer, correct? The same Luthien? Yes, exactly. Yeah, um, and so we we're going to have them on desk. Uh, we also have not announced prizing yet. So I thought that I could walk through some of the cool prizes that people that compete at this uh, tournament are going to be able to win. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, we're giving away land. So Whoa. you have uh, at least 60 plots of land are up for grabs in these two tournaments that we're running Jeez. at Splinter Lands or Splinter Fest. So if you finish in the top 16 of each tourney, you get a piece of land. If you're the winner of our gold league tournament, 10 land plots, second and third place gold league. It's third, three for second place, two for third and first or one, an additional one for fourth place. Not to mention, you don't even have to be good at the game. You can come. And if you're at splinter fest, if you're even present during the tournaments. We have on stage games that people in the crowd are going to be able to compete in and also win plots of land. So it's, it's going to be, <laughs> <laughs> kind of nutty um i'm very very excited about it especially because um again it, you're going to be able to be playing with all of your favorite cards as well as rift watchers in this tournament you want to see maxed champion level cards 
this is the place where you're going to be able to do it. That's freaking sweet. Yeah, I'm dude. I'm telling you, like it's I've been sitting on a lot of these announcements and <laughs> stuff like that. It's going to be pretty crazy. Um, And while we're here talking about tournaments, uh, don't forget the alley coin tournament. The champion level alley Straza tournament happens tomorrow. There's another one next week. That's our beginner level one. If you're interested in joining the alley coin tournament, um, you can go to their discord right now, grab the password to be able to jump in. There's, uh, I think in the champion level one, over a thousand dollars worth of prizes. And at the beginner, I believe it's five to 600, um, that are all up for grabs, which is super, super cool. Um, also if you are a fan of tournaments, I love you so much, please do me a favor. I've gotten a couple of videos already, but we're still looking for fan submitted videos from the audience who want to be featured at Splinterfest on the big screen. All I need you to do, record a video telling me why you love Splinterlands. Doesn't have to be anything crazy. We've had children even submit these because they love Splinterlands or Splinterlands so much. Um, you can submit it by emailing it to me at weirdbeard at splinterlands.com. If there's any nudity in it, we cannot show it. Please don't send anything like that to me. Um, no pickles. No pickles. Keep the pickles out of here. Um, and then the last thing to wrap up everything that we have going on. Um, I want to be able to announce Splintercast, our Splinterlands podcast. It's launching bi-weekly. Our very first episode is coming out on Wednesday. Uh, it's hosted by me, so you get to hang out with me for, you know, an hour every other week. Our very first week where you have a conversation with Infidel and Crypto Llama. So being able to talk everything Splinterlands, why Splinterlands for them and their journey. We're going to be talking to fans of Splinterlands, both inside and out of the company, uh, influencers in the play to earn space, uh, people who are just big, you know, blockchain enthusiasts and just having fun conversations, man. Um, I The way I describe it is having a beer and hanging out with your friends and talking stuff that you already like to talk about. So to run over all of that again real quick. Splinterlands <laughs> Tournament Partners List. Applications open Friday. Come to our town hall. It's at 9 a.m. EST. Be at Splinterfest. Bulldog, Luthien, and Infidel all host, or sorry, Bulldog, Luthien, and Aftersound all hosting on desk. We're giving away tons of land, more land than you know what to do with. I don't know what to do with it. Splintercast happening starting on Wednesday. Our very first episode is dropping. And Ali Straza, the Alley Coin Tournament happens tomorrow go to their discord i'm about to post the link for the password to be able to get in to win over a thousand dollars prize thank you pretty awesome all right <laughs> thanks fellas okay. uh, that's just that's just an incredible update and stoked to see that happen so not only are we doing rooney and not only are we doing tower defense and not only do we get riff watchers out we're gonna go update brawls and you're gonna get sps for brawls and we're doing all these tournaments streaming and making partnerships with legends like ali straza it's all pretty awesome can I, um, can I mention something about Splinter Fest? Oh yeah, please do, man. Yeah, I have uh, I have a couple images I'm going to be dropping into uh, into Discord here in the Town Hall channel. Everyone who attends Splinter Fest is going to be getting one of these bad boys. They will get an actual booster pack of some random Chaos Legion cards, plus some other goodies. I've been told have been are going to be put in the packs. Um, you know, some some will be legendary or epic, common or rare. Some will even be foil versions. Uh, you know, people can trade them or people can keep their packs sealed, you know, for resale value. But it's just one of the cool uh, swag perks that there's going to be at the event. Uh, is this a point where we should point and laugh at all the people that aren't coming to Splinterfest? Uh, as long as it's not because of ridiculous travel restrictions, then yes. Okay. Um, and yeah, it is, yeah. these these physical things are courtesy of uh, of reseller slash blockchain cards. So he is the master of the uh, the physical Splinterland stuff that we've done. So give him a shout out for that. Yeah, pretty awesome. Um, yeah. So some of you guys are going to miss out because you decided not to come to to Splinterfest. That was a that was a bad decision on your part because there's just awesome things that you can't get anywhere other than Splinterfest. So hopefully some of you will amend your ways and come down and join us. Um, all right, uh, Nate. So we talked about a lot of things that are like going live and are happening like in development right now. Um, but there's like all this kind of stuff that you have to do to prep to get to the point where, you know, Rooney didn't just like magically appear. Somebody had to, to make all the Roonies. And, um, you know, the tower defense game didn't just like, you know, magically appear, somebody has to build all those assets. Um, 
so this this little segment to me, the the kind of like uh, creative update, and I I just want to understand like what are we working on next? What's kind of coming down the pipeline at us? And you know, are are we done? Like, have we built everything we want we want to build, or is there is there still more stuff that we want to try to produce and get out there? Uh, no, I mean there. Crap, dang, there's so much stuff to be excited about, right? Uh, not just Rooney. Um, e even what just Matt just said with Splinter Fest and Weird Beard, like um, I don't, I don't know if if uh, reseller is going to be blockchain cards is going to be able to pull it off. If he does, thank you so much. I gave him like these uh, um, art assets, and I said, hey, can we get some special cards that aren't even in the packs? Special exclusive cards. Put those aside. Because I really wanted to uh, celebrate anyone who's brave enough to come to Splinter Fest in cosplay. Like, if you are brave enough to come in full regalia, just like dressed up as Spirit of the Forest or looking like the Lord of Darkness or anything like that, and everyone could take pictures with you and stuff like that. I mean, I wanted to be able to reward you in some way. So if, if Blockchain Cards actually pulls it off, and gets these special cards. If he says he was going to do this cool stuff to the card, that would make them extra special. Then, um, then I, I'm thinking that's the only way you're going to get one of these uh, is is you show up and 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 show us your 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 cosplay stuff. Um, and we'll, we'll yeah, see how that goes. I don't Blake, know. If that's the case. Am I eligible or am I ineligible? I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> see, Nate, Nate. What if I dress up as my my card art? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, if people came, I I can imagine Cryptomancer showing up, looking all scary, like yes, all the kids like start this. crying and run away. I'm yeah. in on this. But now <laughs> I've right, like we... got two weeks to pull off a costume. Now, come on, I got to start earlier. All right, what else um, is on the what else is on the roadmap? Like, what are you working on? Not just like the the you know you're always working on some of this like sidebar stuff. It's kind of amazing that, that you know like Matt and I are always commenting like. Every now and then we look over and like Nate has done something that was totally unexpected, not planned, didn't even discuss it with us. And it's like, oh, look at this really cool and awesome thing that none of us knew was coming. So there's always that like the Nate sidebar action. Um, what about like the main things that you're working on? What about the what are the what are the pieces that are like, you know, driving you nuts in terms of like, here's a here's the content that we're really cranking out next. Yeah, I, I think that we're always working on 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 stuff on the sidelines. You know, I'll, I'll go I'll go tell the creative team, hey, look, this is the high priority. This is the next big update. This is like this is our focus. But you know what? Um, and and this is something I usually tell all the creative team. Really, uh, we have these monthly check ins, and uh, you know, one of our guests here, uh, who's practically my 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 second in command, if you will, our executive admin for creative, he can get into all the different you know, ways that we, we do stuff on the creative side. But um, usually what we end up doing is, you know, I'll, I'll tell people, hey, look, you know, this is important. I need you 90% of the time focused on this. But if you feel like you're hitting your head against the wall, if you need a breather, if you just need a step away, then what's your pet project? And it's optional. They don't have to. But lots of times they'll choose something. Well, it would be cool if this, or I can make this part of the game so much cooler if you would just let me just, and I was like, go for it. You know, as long as, as long, we'll green light it, just go ahead and spend a little time work on it. And when it's done, it's done. And then we'll, we'll give it to the product owners. We'll let the devs start working on it and whatever. They'll, we'll, they'll, they'll figure it in. But, but sometimes, you know, the creative side, they're full of these passionate, innovative, people who are just have ideas just flying across the room and you're like whoa well we can't do that now but but that doesn't mean no we can't do it ever maybe you know so so sometimes there's there's a lot of cool stuff and some of that stuff i think will come to fruition for those of you who are going to be attending splinter fest you might see a little bit of that stuff kind of bubble to the surface and and i can't wait to show people in the meantime a, a good example of that is probably like the the lore story we dropped earlier sorry i dropped it in the did a Discord chat earlier while while Matt was talking about the um, the the Rooney um, and and the pickle. I remember during the uh, concept and planning stage the the, <laughs> the pickle idea, and we were like went back and forth debating on the pros and cons of including the pickle. And um, and ultimately, I'm kind of curious, seeing the positive reception for for the pickle. I'm wondering where it ends up. Uh, our our, jo our our narrative lead Joey is uh, partnering with Matt 
to kind of figure out some of these um, rarities. And I, I, I can't wait to find out whether they decide to make the pickle a more common or like a super ultra <laughs> rare legendary uh, trait. So I guess we'll we'll see how that goes. Um, just to celebrate the Rooney, though, here is um, for those of you uh, who are Mavericks and have visited, uh, you know, have seen what we had going on in test server before. You might have seen this already, but but this Ooh. is an official wallpaper. Go ahead and celebrate uh, Rooney and and bringing those to life with the battle mages right there. Um, and I don't know. I could show. Um, you know, I, I mentioned last town hall that what we try to do is kind of appeal to both cute. Well, not both cute. Uh, kind of oddball weird and what's really freaking cool so i think it'd be fun to maybe show an example of all three and these are just random right so don't get any idea like oh i'm gonna get that one it's like all these traits are random but these are good examples of the possibilities so let me let me find a cute one this one's kind of cute so this would be an example of like a cute one um and then let me no. find weird oh like, like here's the... an example of like a weird one I like the bunny. I like him pulling the rabbit out of the head. But since and... all the parts are going to be mixed and matched, you could get like a cute head and a weird body and a super cool sword, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, I'm trying to find something that would be considered cool. Uh, this one is, yeah, this one's kind of cool. I like this guy. So this might you... be a good example of a cool one. So, but, oh, but like Matt funny. said, yeah, the, the traits are going to go in and out. It's usually the head, though, that has the most personality. Usually it's the head that kind of like makes you think, oh, that's cute or cool or weird or whatever, but not always. Sometimes right. you get some other trait that's a little. I'm kind of FOMOing over that red one. Can you reserve that red one for me and make sure nobody else is allowed to have that specific one? You know what, Aggie? I don't think you were even aware of this. And this was, uh, I'm trying to remember, someone on the creative time uh, team, one, I think it was one of our coordinators, but I'm not sure, suggested that, wait a minute, what if we used some of the uh, apparel from the business card art? So, of course, you had to have the founders of the company. So there is actually a body that is perfectly uh, based upon uh, your business card apparel has arrows sticking out of it nice. and everything. And then nice. we got one for, for Matt and, and his business card artwork. So you could literally end up, if you're lucky, you might get one of those legendary traits where you have the same apparel as one of the founders of the company. Uh, he, he, this almost looks like he's got the equivalent of chop, right? Like he, I know he doesn't have a face, but that his helmet kind of looks like he's got helmet chops. So oh, yeah. I, I have an immediate brotherhood with this Rooney. So, you know, I think I, I want to be careful. I don't want to hype it up too much because friggin' I honestly I, I don't know if the whitelist is gonna last more than six seconds. I mean, I feel like the, the hype is already at such absurd levels, and I want to get them myself. So preferably I'd keep everybody away so that I could get the ones I want. I know that's not gonna happen. So I'm going to like try to shift your focus a little bit and so just celebrate the Rift Watchers and how well we did there. So to celebrate that, uh, you guys, have, I've already shown a wallpaper for Osher, the first, the, the pre-sale uh, airdrop that's going to happen, I think next week. Um, and so just, just to, I'll give you the card art on this wallpaper, but just to celebrate, hey, she was unlocked. And then I don't know how many people have seen this character. But uh, I believe this guy got unlocked as well. Matt, we, we did two airdrops at the end of 500,000 packs, right? Yeah, so sure is the uh, the limited edition promo card, but also the first like regular airdrop is going to go out. So you can go ahead and show that. All right. So this, is, uh, this one is a cool character. I'm telling you. Um, we kind of went in reverse on the order. So when we finally released the airdrop screen and people could see that on the Rift Watcher shot page and go to the airdrop screen, we did a little different than Chaos Legion. And we also went in reverse order. That way, you know, um, when you see the order in which the airdrops appear, it's reverse of Chaos Legion. That way, you know, it, it just made sense balance-wise to kind of try to do it that way. So right now it's scheduled. The next airdrop is supposed to be for death. Um, and, uh, that one's freaking killer. Now it is a, like this, this lich dragon and you're thinking, well, Nate, why, why is a dragon in the death element? Well, it's, 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 it's undead. It's, it's like basically dead. So it's kind of like, it's actually ended up being more 
about death than it was uh dragon so i will share that with you and it's it's pretty awesome looking so there is um, oh my god uh yeah that, that looks straight out of like anime or anime i feel like i feel like i could see that like trying to go fight voltron oh yeah <laughs> a big kaiju looking thing yeah so yeah. that is uh usut the undying um is his official name in the lore on the card i'll probably just say usut um, but that that guy's uh, pretty killer. So I'll I know we're running out of time, so I'll I'll just cut it short there. I think I probably shared enough I can do. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, you guys are killing it. the The art team, art team is doing such awesome things. Uh, I mean, I just just you know, can you can you put up a card art from Alpha before we go? Just like <laughs> grab grab something from Alpha, because because ideally we look at like. Go look at an alpha dragon versus this dragon. And then tell me, like, look at how far we've come. It's just it's just staggering to sort of like um to consider, you know, just just how many leaps and bounds we've gone. So thank you for your art direction, Nate. This game is looking beautiful and uh you you've really done a, a an amazing job bringing in the, the art team that you've done. No, absolutely, and thank you. And and the whole the whole the whole creative side is just knocking it out of the park. Not just the art team, the multimedia folks, the narrative team. I mean, just the narrative of that dragon. He's uh he was actually brought back to life from uh, the Lord of Darkness, and they get into the storyline for that as well. So there's so many different connecting pieces. Uh, and I can't wait for you guys go to Splinterfest and see even more of that. So make sure you come. All right, um, I want to do I want to do a, a marketing update. Uh, I meant to go do this earlier, but then I uh, forgot and skipped over poor Chatter here. So Chatter, maybe you can go kind of tell us, like, uh, I know that Weird Beard stole a lot of your thunder, but maybe there's some things that you can tell us about what's going on with the uh, the marketing team. For sure, yeah. Um, a lot of kind of what we've been doing has really been just supporting everything that we've talked about today so far. So really just trying to make sure that every single one of these product launches are kicking off correctly and, and making sure that this, they are successful kind of as time goes on. Cause there's quite a few things that are launching in the next kind of couple of weeks here or have been in the, the previous weeks, uh, along with kind of what weird beer were saying, we'd be doing a whole bunch of press tours. So, I mean, one pumping out press for every single thing that we've been doing, um, also joining a ton of AMAs. I think we've clocked over six figures worth of listeners in the past month and a bit, just in terms of like AMAs and big credit to, to PJ and uh, 16 bit John um, for also kind of helping out there. They've been huge and in jumping into AMAs and just kind of making sure that we're spreading the word around about all these new projects. Um, also a big shout out to Crypto Monks. They've been kind of helping us do a lot of marketing behind the scenes. So they've been connecting us with a ton of different discords. I think we have a extra hundred or so discords listening into all of our updates, uh, the time being just kind of because of all the networking they've been helping us doing. So huge credit to them. Uh, they are also the ones who are helping us do all the ARG stuff. Uh, so a quick update on ARG for those people who well, haven't been following, uh, first off, I, what is ARG? Nobody knows the acronym. Yeah. Augmented reality gaming. Um, so really kind of trying to tie in the, lore and the, the physical stories um, of the world into this kind of digital space here. So how it's going to be working is on the back of Rooney and apologies for people who have been kind of hearing this from me already, but on the back of Rooney, we're going to be doing a lore story. That lore story is going to end with the protagonist kind of trapped in a dungeon or in a kind of space. Uh, and you really have to get them escaped out of that scenario. And how we're going to be doing that is it's going to be in our discord. We're going to give ample heads up for kind of when that's launching. It should likely be kind of mid-October, sometimes a little bit after Splinterfest. But you're going to get a riddle for a scenario, and you're really just kind of answering questions in the, the Discord against a bot there. But as you kind of answer every question right, you unlock a new scenario, new riddles. Um, it's going to be really cool, though. I know Joey and the rest of the creative team have been kind of working super hard on the back end. They've created a whole new alphabet and everything for this lore, and it's going to be super super cool once this all launches so just big kudos to everyone on the team that's been working on that side of things otherwise uh i mean splinter fest going along as normal um we've been planning everything from the event itself to beth and i were figuring out kind of restaurants and, and menus and everything for the vip dinner and stuff tonight uh and then lastly from us the gls side of things so genesis league soccer uh, and Genesis League Sports, the the sports side of things, the white paper was released last week, 
And then for soccer, we are currently in multiple meetings per week with Major League Soccer's Players Association, just planning a launch campaign around the, the pack launch there. So more to come, but we're working on some videos and some highlights and everything with actual players in Major League Sports. So lots of cool things on the horizon, uh, a lot of big partnerships coming up. We're working on the merch store on the back end, um, but a lot of stuff upcoming. We can't share too, too much at this time, but just in the next couple of weeks, kind of watch out for a few big marketing announcements. So if we do a fast sellout of the Rift Watcher pre-sale, and then we do a fast sellout of the Tower Defense pre-sale, and then we follow that up with a fast sellout of the Rooney pre-sale, like how do we how do we tell the world that how how do we get that news out that like our our community is sick nasty and hardcore and like finding ways to participate and engage and collect even in like you know a pretty horrific bear market yeah i mean it's it's a little bit of everything we're doing outbound spend with kind of optimizing all of our ads um on that kind of side of things those have actually been going really really well uh return on ad spend has been like double kind of what we were seeing in the past week um their past month sorry compared to the previous months and everything so great Speaking to see of which, that. uh you're authorized to triple that by the way let's go yeah we're working on it <laughs> <laughs> now the number has been steadily rising since we kicked off on Google. So great to see you there. Um, Snapchat ads, we're creating a video with Crypto Llama. Actually, Crypto is going to be uh, starring in the, the video for us. That's going to be kicking off fairly soon here. I think it should be done by next week. Um, otherwise, for news wise, like PR, we're getting out there. Uh, Ag, we're actually working on getting you booked on the floor of the NASDAQ again for an interview on that. Um, and then just really everything else in between. Yeah, I mean, the, the the marketing team never sleeps, you know, like everybody in this company has really pulled together to, you know, make sure that it, like we're we're entering the age of utility and doing it to the best of our our ability that, you know, DEC, SBS and vouchers, you can never have enough because there's always too many products that are on the shelf for you to choose from you, you you're not going to be able to like whale up as much as you'd like in all of them. And uh, there's just constant pressure of people that are trying to get those tokens to get these kind of limited edition um, products that really, like, I, I think are pretty groundbreaking in in this space. You know, I don't I don't know of a lot of tower defense games in Web three. I don't know of PFP that has any kind of utility. I don't know a pack sale that like directly benefits the community. You know, I think we really break grounds with you know how many people have done a pack sale for the DAO. You know, we didn't we didn't collect a dime as a company you just don't you don't see the kind of things that we're doing and you certainly don't see them three in two weeks you know i i think we're trying to in these in these markets and in these times trying to go make some noise and make some waves and show you know who we are what we build and what our community is like and uh you guys have the difficult task of constantly getting the word out about all the stuff that we're doing because it's a lot it just never sleeps. Yeah, and it's been pretty cool too. I know I said this the other day, but we were at a conference in Toronto a couple of weeks ago. And I mean, we've been, myself, John, Hardpoint, a couple other people have been jumping between conferences for, for quite a while now. And I mean, Egg, you're kind of the big mastermind behind all that initially. Um, but at the conferences initially, it was like every other person that would come up or just kind of who's Splinterlands, who are you guys, never heard of you. Last conference we were at at Toronto, there was four people that didn't know who we were at the two day conference that we were at. Everyone else had either heard of us or played the game, whatever else. So just really cool to see how that's expanding and how kind of we're going on there. Um, and then just on top of that, some of the big partnerships we're working with right now. And I mean, they may not end up with anything, but so far everyone's seeming pretty excited about it, but some pretty big name kind of web two companies are looking to uh, get some stuff going with us too. So the fact that those big names are actually kind of coming into the space is, is pretty groundbreaking as well. Excuse me. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, I want to go, <clears throat> I want to do a little segment on Digicon, which is kind of another one of our, uh, our marketing pieces. So let's go get Waffles because he's on and let's go talk real quick about Digicon. Uh, hey, Waffles, what is Digicon? When's it happening? And why should somebody attend?
Yeah. So, uh oh, oh, she's muted. Uh oh, she's muted. Uh, I, I can, I can hear you. Uh, let's go. We're gonna, we're gonna have to do some of that again. All right. Okay. We just needed to reload waffles there. So we lost you for a second, Waffles. Uh, what is Digicon? Who's going to attend? And um, and why should somebody, you know, like an audience member, come out? Sure, sure. So not only is Digicon fully virtual, it's in a metaverse. So let's think about like Animal Crossing or, you know, a bunch of other stuff. I'm just going to go right into it. It's a convention completely online. There's a bunch of different crypto projects there, presentations, giveaways, uh, swag. And not only that, you get to be with some of the awesome people that you know and love in the community. Um, it's hosted bi-monthly. And the next one is coming this weekend. So be sure to come September 23rd to 25th, open 24-7 in the metaverse. And not only that, uh, you will be able to hear a live talk show from Aggie and a couple other awesome people there. Um, now, the last one, we had like 2,000 people that were on or in there at the same time. Is that right? I know. That was our record. I was super happy about that. I, yeah. I would just, uh, let's do it again. <laughs> and I think we have, I think we have over a hundred projects that have booths in the, in the event now. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. We are, I think right now we have at least 90 that I confirmed. Um, Gala Games is coming back. Uh, we have NFT High, we have NFT Horizon, uh, NFT Blocks, Atomic Hub. Um, EMP, which is one of our sponsors uh, for Splinterfest, and uh, I'm trying to think who else. Anyways, full stacked event. You guys got to be there. Okay. When when is it again? And how do I where where do I go to sign in, or how do I get more info? Sure. I will post a link into the chat right now, and there will be an RCP link. There you go. Sweet. Let me. Get, I guess I'll go pin that so people can find it later. Yeah, and uh, if you guys are then, wondering what these ears are, I'm trying to see if I can do a Biz Kitty cosplay for Splinterfest. So <laughs> it just came in the mail, and also my tail came in the mail. I don't know if you guys want to see it, but it looks like this. I don't know if you can see. <laughs> yeah, it's all of them. Um, okay, uh, I got distracted by you being a cat. <laughs> all right, I'm I'm definitely over time. I'm 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 failing today. So we're gonna we're gonna move on, but Waffles, thanks so much for putting together Digicon. It's been growing steadily, and, and really like to see all the different products and, and projects that are coming. Um, one one thing I want to add, uh, and this is this is a teaser. This is not a guaranteed thing, but one of the things I'm trying to introduce into Digicon and our own little Splinterlands virtual world would be some trading. So I know it's a, a really popular thing where people want to trade not just like buy or sell on one specific item on the market, but really do complicated trades. And I'm trying to figure out a way that we can go do that while running around in an avatar uh, in, in the metaverse. So whether whether we start that in Digicon or we actually have like a, a Splinterlands metaverse where you're you're interacting and, and running around and being able to trade all your different assets, it's something that I'm actively working on. And I'd be really excited to uh, really allow folks to, to be working on that and uh, engaging in that yeah okay well, we already gotta... have yeah we already have dr Bly and alex stormbringer as 3d avatars you can use in this space so it's 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 getting along yeah uh the the whole thing is pretty awesome i i, I like the uh, the company used to be gamer job now they're inverse i really like the inverse convention space and and to me it it has every everything i need to sort of make it like our own little uh city that we could go hang out in. and i'm trying to think about all the ways that you know, when we started, it'll probably be a little sparse with the things that we could do. But, you know, having some digital plots where you could build your guild, uh, maybe have a little shop where you sell your specific NFTs, um, being able to trade 24-7 with other people in a trustless, decentralized manner. You know, these are the kinds of things that I'm trying to figure out how to do for the players. So uh, I think and, and it might start in Digicon, which is why, you know, I'm bringing it up here. But these are things that I'm working on, and I just thought that the uh, the community should hear about it. Okay, uh, I think that's everybody from the team that's already presenting. So let's go do a couple of Splinterlands introductions. Um, I'm totally I'm totally behind on all the things that 
Um, you know, I don't know how I'm going to fit in questions. Maybe I'm going to have to run late this time, but um, we have three different introductions that I want to do. So let's go bring on a trolley dragon to start. Um, you, trolley, you work with the, the creative team and we got Nate here too. Uh, and he mentioned, he, he referenced you as sort of like the, the second in command or his right hand man. Like what, what do you do for the, for the creative team? And um, you know, what's the, what's the gig entail? Well, hi everyone. My name is Chris. Uh, I have to shout out Hardpoint and Nate because Richard and Hardpoint actually hired me. So I actually don't get to see Richard as much. So I'll say hi to him right now. And what I do for the creative hey, team. <laughs> hi, Richard. Um, what I do for the creative team. I basically do everything from facilitation, production, all of those things that get the the web formed for all of us to get our assets in place for things to go through the pipeline. So it can be like a second command role. I would argue it's, if anyone watches Game of Thrones, it's very Hand of the King-esque to, <laughs> <laughs> to, the, to the creative director. So, you know, it's, I, I set out to work on a video game. It's been like my dream ever since I left college. So now that I work on it, it's like, it's like every day is like waking up and it's a lot of work, but it's, I'm living my dream every day. So thank you guys so much for letting me do that. And Nate is an incredible boss and love all the things I do for him. <laughs> yeah. One of, one of the things I was excited about for you is like, I, I could just feel like a, a raw sense of organization and um, you know, Nate is gifted in a million different things, but sometimes he, he can be in a, in a lot of different places at once. And you know, having having somebody that's pretty detail oriented and task oriented, uh, I felt like you two would actually be a pretty good match. And it seems like uh, the creative team is pumping out more content than than we've ever seen before. So uh, oh, something yeah. over there is going well. No, yeah, Aggie, and like just the projects that I'm working on that are coming that you guys mentioned, Rooney, Splinterfest, all these things. Just the amount, because the creative team is the largest in the company. The amount of getting from point A to point B to get these things out in front of your eyes and to the community. It's, it's, it's like a, it's like a sprint, but an epic marathon to complete every time. And, you know, we have so much stuff coming and we're so excited that you love all the art that's going through. Um, I couldn't do it alone though. I have two other t people on my team, the two other coordinators, you guys know them, Tyler and Alfredo. They, they, they get the job done. They let me, they help me do my job. So I love them all so much. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we, we're on short time for each one of these because I've. We, uh, this has just been one of the hardest ones to manage the time for. You're fine. You're fine. Is, is there is there anything that you you really want to get across about you know the the work that's coming or something that you're really excited about or just you know an experience at the company? I try to keep this open ended. Sure. Um, I think project I'm most excited for is the Rooney project because I can say that like. Nate knows this. I was very passionate about a lot of things about, <laughs> about the Rooney thing. So I'm excited to see that out there in the world. Um, and just in the company, just again, I'm just so grateful every day to wake up and do a dream job. And it's, I'm just grateful. Thank you so much, guys. And that, that's a sentiment that I hear over and over and, and specifically out of the creative team. You guys have done a really nice job building a, a, you know, a zeitgeist or a feeling or a, or a passion uh kudos to building that kudos to working on it and uh please help us keep cranking out more and more stuff out of creative it's great of course of course thank you all right i have two folks for support so let's let's bring them both on at the same time um we have coronavirus oh we're not set up for that oh, let me try that again let's go do coronavirus first um and so it, again we don't have a ton of time so forgive me but coronavirus who are you what do you do and you know, how did you how did you come across Splinterlands in the first place? Hey, so uh, I'm coronavirus, as Agro said, and uh, I've worked for Splinterlands as a support staff, but I've actually been transitioning to writing articles, guides for Splinterlands. Uh, so some people might not know, but like Splinterlands also has a guide section, and it is actually very helpful for like the newer players. So I've put, been playing this game for around more than two years. So. And I've been playing different leagues and tournaments, so my knowledge will be very helpful to like the newer players, I feel. So if new players go on these guides, I think they can learn more about the game and they will be able to earn better. And being on the team is actually super exciting. Like I feel like working with you guys is super exciting. I've met lo lo lots of amazing people. And uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to get a segment on here that are like meant to be those kind of tool tips 
or suggestions or like, you know, best in practice ways that, that our players can not just, you know, like you said, not everybody knows that those guides exist. And it's not really unless you're ha already having problems that you go and search for them. But there's a ton of guides on here. And I'm hoping that we can start getting some like tool tips from support every single week so that uh, you guys can walk us through some of the things that the, the players have a challenge on. Like when, when you're when you're working with those guides, like what do you think is the the highest priority or how do you think through what you're what you're authoring and what you're trying to get out to the players? Uh, so the way that this works is that people submit ideas to uh, Royal Eagle and then Royal Eagle like decides, uh, oh, which one is most important, which one is more helpful to players. And then we have a priority system and then he gives it out to like the writers such as me. And then we write the articles based on our knowledge and then we publish them out to the players. And so what what got you jazzed about being here? I mean, what were you doing before you were supported Splinterlands and before you were writing these guides? Like, what, what were you doing before this? Before this, I was just like another regular player. I invested some money in here and then I started playing these tournaments. And uh, I do find like a lot of new players didn't know how to play the game and earn properly. So like I wanted to help them and I found, found like this way was like the best way to help the newer players get to know the game better. And so then they could stay in the game and enjoy it. Yeah. It, so we're, we're down to the end here. Is there one thing that like you want to leave the audience with? Like maybe what, what piece of this are you most passionate about? Where are you, where, where are you hoping that the support team goes next? Well, that's a hard question because we can go a lot of different places. Everyone has like a lot of problems they need to be addressed. I'm hoping that we will be able to expand more and then be able to address those problems better in the future. Yeah, I mean, to, to be fair, the, the team has done an enormous amount of work to be able to go just reduce the number of problems overall. And some of what we're seeing is just as we get bigger, you know, you, you end up finding more and more of those problems because there's just more people that are running into more stuff. But, um, you know, given where we were a year ago, I'm just astounded by the, the progress that the support team has made. So kudos to you, coronavirus. I, I got to go for time reasons, but thanks for being here and um, thanks for working on support. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, let's go. Let's go grab Paul. Um, Paul, are you here? Uh, yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? All right. Yeah. So you're another member of the support team. You've been here forever too. You want to go? How how'd you find Splinterlands? Uh, I found Splinterlands from the Sesame Seed promotion through TRX. Yeah, this was, was this uh, was the second like crowdfund product that we did yeah uh, middle, this middle was, of data this was years ago middle of data in 2019 yeah, yeah i mean paul you're like oh, oh gee all right so you you came in through that and then so what do you do now for the support team how do you like what, what um, function do you serve i'm part of the live agent and triage team uh we're called the healers which is headed by travel girl and, and, and were, were you doing support stuff before you got to splinterlands I still have a day job, actually, which is in software support and integration. Um, oh, so you do I'm this kind all of double dipping. Yeah, I'm kind of double yeah. dipping. <laughs> all right. Well, what when you what, what got you passionate about Splinterlands? Like, are, aren't there there are like a million play to earn games? There's a million different ways to do it. You you were on like a completely different chain at the time. How'd you how'd you end up finding us and and like being a you know, a rock in this in this ecosystem for the last three years. What what do you think makes Splinterlands special to you? Um, I don't know. I found I found the game on TRX there, like I said, and I don't know. Basically, I never played a, a TCG game before, and I didn't think I was going to like it to begin with. And I started playing it, and then I went, I did some battles, and I got against some cards. I'm like, well, I can't beat this card, so I guess I'll go out and buy it. And then I kept doing that over and over again, and it kind of just snowballed, and that's where I'm at now. Yeah, sometimes you find that like, oh, I, even I'm like, I need I need a second job so I can go get more cards. I mean, I, I I love collecting this stuff. I don't I don't know, I don't know how other people think about it, but I'm digging it. Um, so what what are I mean what what problem do you run into the most when you're working with a uh, with the like live the humans that need support, like in real time, what are their biggest concerns? Uh, most of it is, is like I said, I just basically triage stuff. So I'm kind of like frontline support. So just answering tons of different types of questions as they come in through a discord and, and telegram. 
Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And also the the live agent, and also um, um, yeah, through Zendesk. Whenever people send in email requests through Zendesk. And then if you uh, we're we're running short on time again, all these interviews have to be really slow or short because we have you know so much stuff that we have to get through. Any, anything you want to leave the audience with? Anything that you're stoked about, or anything that you want us thinking about? Uh, yeah, I'm actually really excited for the legendary water summoner, uh, Pasibolus, the wise that's coming out. Any uh, any particular reason? Uh, Dave McCoy, Mellow Fellow, and myself we're the ones that helped design it, along with uh, Joey and Larry on the Splinterland side, and uh, which they were they were great to work with. We ac we actually had a lot of changes that were done for that one, uh, that went back and forth for a pretty long time. So they were great. Uh, we yeah. incorporated our guild name Team Possible into it. Shout out to all the Team Possible people out there. Nice. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, doing. Um, I, I really like that part of our game is that. You know, there, there's probably more legendaries uh, and more legendary summoners that have a backstory with an actual player than those that don't. I mean, you guys are really like built into this game, and that's that's one of the things that I love about it. Yeah, I want to say a big big thanks to the Splinter, Splinterlands team uh, for creating such a great game and ecosystem. It really changes people's lives, and it's, yeah, been, it's, it's been a pleasure to work with, with work work with you all. Awesome. Thanks, Paul. I'm glad you're here. And thanks for being here for years on end. It's, it, you know, I, I remember seeing you come out of that, um, that C germinator thing and trusted in us back then, you know, it, we're such a, a, a bunch of noobs that are trying to build something cool. So thanks for seeing something in us and thanks for helping us grow. Yeah. Thanks. Cheers. All right. Um, hey, Ron, are you able to go talk about some of the, uh, the Splinterlands TV stuff with me? I want to go, you know, I know I need oh, yeah. to do my shout outs. Um, and I think we got a clip of the week. Is that correct? We got a clip of the week. We got some shout outs. So do you got that already and, and queued up or you need a little bit? of Yeah. Time? So no, I, I basically just have to go steady my loins. Cause I gotta go read. There's like 10 names <laughs> and none of you want to have easy names to read. So we got birds, bees, and trees. One, two, three, uh, big barger, 99, uh, Cimarron and Laz M Howie. Uh, Wang Smith 1125, Boo Tops 18. Shout out to Boo Tops. Um, we got Kira, Team Vanguards, Ankh 12C, Lordo, The Jester Gamer, uh, Dragon, and then also uh, Carl O'Carl. Carl, Carl O'Carl. <laughs> I think that's it. I'm never going <laughs> to. Yeah. Yeah. This is, I mean, that's my life now is trying to do shout outs, but it's all, it's all just like how big of a noob is, is Aggie. I would pronounce that Carlo Carlo, but I understand it's very late for you. Carlo Carlo. I guess that could be Carlo Carlo. I like Carl O'Carl. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, shout Irish. out to you guys. I mean, these are the guys that are watching. Like, uh, do you, do you have the number handy? Like how many, how many minutes of uh, Splinterlands TV people have been watching? Actually, I didn't grab that stat this week. Um, I figured I'll let that brew for a little bit and then surprise okay. everybody. But we did reach over two, th we're like at 2,029 uh, followers. I looked when I looked at oh, it that's last. That's great. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. we crossed the two thousand mark. Uh, things are things are heating up there, um, and we're almost at two hundred subscribers, which is two hundred people paying uh, the Splinterlands TV channel, which goes directly to the streamers. Uh, so awesome. yeah, now it, it the, the the channel is just taking off like crazy. Uh, we have we have a little clip here. I know we're, we're short on time, so you can just go ahead and get right into this. Yeah, let's go for it. Actually, I want to. There's a little bit of a backstory here. So this one is about one of our streamers, Axler Twinblade. Um, and you know, if you've noticed on these streams in the past few town halls, everybody has a card frame that comes from him. He made this card frame. You can go to Baron'sToolbox.com and make your own card frame for your own streams. Um, he also made an amazing little spinner tool that give away cards on streams, and that's what this clip is about. Rondon, you're such a turd. Oh hey, crap! Anna. That was ah. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Rondon is a turd. Oh man, okay. That was not. That was not Axler. No, that was the. That was a bonus clip I was going to do right after, but uh, oh. I try to duplicate the scene and change that. But okay.
Here we go. <laughs> These don't count. I'll just show you. So now when we go to the spinner and I spin, it's going to pick from those cards. So now watch the kitty pop up. That would be hilarious. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> that one was mine. <laughs> but it randomly picks <laughs> from. Uh, so, yeah, his, his spinner is completely random and uh, randomly picks from cards you choose. And, yeah. No, I, I actually wanted to create a, a clip, a bonus clip. That didn't win, but uh, gets an honorable mention this week <laughs> because Luthien, not only is she a bully, she teaches her kids to bully. So, <laughs> oh my Dad, goodness, you're such a turd. Hey, Nana, come here. Come here. Tell Rondon he's a turd. You're a turd. Thank you. <laughs> 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 facts these are facts Ron. <laughs> uh so that's what we have for this week for splinterlands tv uh hope you guys enjoyed that and uh i'm sure you guys are ready for some questions now oh my god well the problem is it's 10 ron are you uh, i, I want to be able to release all the other guys that are here so that they can leave but are you good to keep streaming for a bit? What do we need to do? Do we, um, do we shut down or do we just keep going? I want to answer questions. I mean, I'm good. I'm good. But uh, we need to know who's going to stick around so I can put them all appropriately on the right scene. And I need to know who's leaving. So uh, guys in our private chat over here on the uh, on the video, just let me know if you're leaving. If not, I'll set everything up. But I'm going to put aggro only first. And yeah, let's uh, start with me only. And then when we get when we get the other folks and they know what's going on, we can uh, we can add them back in. So. Um, do you have the, I actually didn't get the list of questions this week. Do you, do you have that wrong? Yeah. The questions I think are being sent my way. Give me just half a second here. I'm hoping that they'll appear. Yep. So these are, um, these are the questions. Maybe these will get shared as well in the, uh, in the discord there. We have two pages. So, uh, I know it's really just one. All right. <coughs> uh, Rift Watchers DAO proposal. Can we split the tower defense pre-sale proposal up into three separate proposals instead of one? Uh, I think they meant Rift Watchers. And I, I, I have a post. I gotta. I think I'm ready to go with this. I should probably get one or two more people's input. Um, but I, I'll, I'll get up a second post, and I think it'll lead to multiple proposals. Um, so we'll get those up. Uh, is 927 the deadline to pass any type of resolution for the pre-sale issues? Uh, I don't know that there's a specific deadline, but we definitely want to get these fast. You know, if people have money trapped in and they want refunds or something that, you know, we don't want that to be an infinite thing. So I'm trying to move quick, but I'm also trying to make sure that, you know, this is like a really complicated issue and I'm trying to get feedback, make sure that the things are smart that we're choosing and uh, going from there. Uh, tower defense will beta access be transferable for those who want to sell off this benefit will accounts be reset after beta any thoughts on how that how that'll work hard point uh you know tonight was the we would beta access right now was account bound we'll we'll discuss internally and see if we're going to change that but right now it would be account bound to the account that purchased it how many packs how many bonus packs do we get for purchasing 500 and do we need vouchers so that, that would be 75, and you'd need 75 vouchers, right? That's correct. It's going to follow the same bonus structure that Chaos Legion has with yeah, vouchers. Perfect. Uh, why, why does a promo card for Tower Defense require so many more packs than a promo card for a normal Splinterland set? That's, we, that's the number we came up with. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, that's that's what it is right now. Uh, why does the it's promo... different economics, you know, so it's that not too. like... It's a totally different thing. So, you know. Uh, can you give us an idea on how many packs we're going to need to, on average, to max out a single copy of every card? Uh, we don't have that yet. Uh, will the pre sale fixes from Whiff Watchers be added in time for Tower Defense and Rooney's to prevent the same problems? Uh, we definitely add, uh, we have a lot of fixes going in for both pre-sales um you know we pro probably won't solve every problem but we're trying to add as many as we can to help with it uh rooney questions can we buy multiple whitelists uh with the same wallet 
I, oh, I can answer those. Uh, yeah, you will be able to to buy multiple with the same wallet. I mean, because if we said no, then people would just make a bunch of different wallets. So it doesn't like we don't we don't want to do things that won't have a real effect. Uh, would it be possible to build a polygon bridge for Rooney's to be staked so players can more actively rent it out without worrying about gas fees while still allowing Splinterlands to tap into the Ethereum market? I mean, there's no plan for that right now. The plan is to get the the most eyeballs, the most money, the most people from the broader community in, and that's on Ethereum and OpenSea right now. With The, the gas fees are not that high on Ethereum, and it's not going to be something where you're going to need to do like tons of transactions. So we'll we'll cross that bridge. No, or maybe uh, we'll I see we, what you did get there. to it. I saw what you did there. Can the team please come up with some ways to make sure that the Rooney whitelist presale isn't botted and goes to actual players. This will make the Rift Watchers pre-sale feel more like an eternity. We we have some ways. That that's all I'll say. But it it still may make the Rift Watchers pre-sale feel like an eternity. We we also do have some flexibility there. Um, you know, more flexibility than we have with the with the Rift Watchers because you know this is something we're just selling. There's a lot more available. Um, you know, there's a lot more potential whitelist spots that we, you know, we talked about. We could have some for the third party communities that we're talking to. And so I don't know we're, we we have some ways that are implemented. We're going to see how it goes, but, but be on and be ready. All right. Uh, will Rift Watchers be added to the modern brawl phrase when the true modern phrase come? Yeah. Those Rift Watchers will be in modern. So uh, will chaos only phrase be added to tiers three plus? Um, I don't want to say yes or no to that question. I would just say that uh, we do want to review free composition and see what kind of changes we want to make, but we need to come to some kind of consensus on what exactly we need to do there. Mm -hmm. Perfect answer. Uh, like, I love how so many people in this company get what we're trying to do. You know, I don't, I, I didn't have to like poke at Cryptomancer to be like, hey, don't you think we should take some more community feedback? Like, this is just what we do as a company. And I hope that you guys feel that in the way that we we interact with you and the way that we, you know, make choices and, it, and, and it's just ingrained in how we operate. Perfect answer, Mancer. Uh, when stones become only purchasable with vouchers, will we get to keep any we previously bought with merits or will those be refunded? I've seen players hoarding up so they don't have to use vouchers later. When will this change to voucher, when this when this change to vouchers happens? Um, you'll keep stones that you've previously purchased. Uh, we're not going to be adjusting balances or anything like that. Um, the change will happen sometime after Brawl SPS rewards, uh, which means if I were to take a, a gut feeling guess, uh, maybe uh, end of October, early November, or something like that. Uh, since brawls are coming out soon with SBS and will have enough incentive to motivate brawls to go higher, can you please give us the new SBS information a few weeks ahead of time so we can all properly plan our strategies? It's going to vote. Some advance notice. And yeah, yeah. like I said, we're going to have an SPS, the governance vote on the exact numbers. So there will be plenty of time for people to discuss and debate that and uh, get their votes cast. And, and once it's finalized, of course, we'll have an official blog post um, with all the final details. Awesome. Uh, miscellaneous, why do all these big sales start at around the same time? Can you vary these up for those who always miss out because they can't be available at the time? The main thing we need is we need our resources. We need our developers and our support staff and as many people as possible in the company to be available for the potential issues that might arise. So unfortunately, um, even though we are based all over the world, where it's, you know, a large amount in the US, and we can't just do something where, you know, most of the company needs to be up at 4 a.m. Um, it's just, we're also not going to be like on our best for fixing things that happen. So, you know, we, we try to vary stuff that we can vary, but you know, really making sure things run smoothly is the most important thing. Yeah, totally, totally concur with that. And the last question for the pre-sorted list, why am I constantly matched up with players 500 to 1,000 rating below me, even if I'm not playing for a leaderboard position at the top of my league? I mean, the matchmaking system does its best to match you with players as close to your rating as possible. But, you know, if there's not those players playing at the current time, it's going to, 
it's going to match you up with the, the best it can find. I mean, if you're if you're towards the top of your league, even if you're not like you know above the top rating, you know generally you're going to be matched up with players lower than you because you can't get matched up with players in a higher league. Um, but you know we do we do the best that we can with the amount of players that are playing at any given time. Okay. Um, I want to, I want to take another, maybe 15 minutes of questions from the audience, just for whatever they want to ask. And I know that this thing is running long, but, uh, let's go open up questions and then, um, you know, give people a couple minutes to do this and then, um, then then we'll call it a night. Sorry, it's going long, but man, it's, it's freaking brutal. All right. Jimmy here is asking, could you guys please separate the ranked SPS claim from the node license SPS claim? Thoughts on that? Uh, potentially, I mean, right now the, the goal was just to get all the new things out and available, uh, you know, as quickly as possible. So we have obviously huge lists of things that we need to do. Um, and I, I don't necessarily see that one as like too high up in the order of importance. Yeah. Well, we'll improve that experience, but it's not the highest priority. Uh, would it be possible to facilitate direct SPS deposit into tribal decks? from outside exchanges, i.e. crypto.com, the same way we can directly deposit LTC, BNB, BTC. So it'd be very helpful as we move towards at, uh, adoption and onboarding. Uh, I guess it's possible because that would be a, a um, BEP20 and we could deposit BEP20 and uh, ERC20s. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll think through that. I think there's, uh, there's lots of technical considerations there. It's something that we can think about, but uh, I think it would be difficult and not something we would be able to do anytime soon. Okay. Where, where are you reading the questions from? Uh, well, right now it's at uh, 10.07. I'm at Bitcoin SIG. Uh, well, wait list, and I'm in, I'm, in, I'm in town hall. I missed Commander Chaos, so I did. Are you going to be attempting to prevent people from bypassing the website and buying these pre-sales on the chain only with fast selling pre-sales automation will be king. It's already happening and it's going to get worse. I mean, <coughs> no, in the sense that everything we do is based on blockchain transactions. It's a, it's a blockchain based game. Um, but like I said, we, you know, we, we do what we can to, to add reasonable limitations that, you know, make sense. Will waitlist or whitelist spots be transferable? No, like I... they're going to be linked to, they're just going to be linked to Ethereum wallets. Okay. So before, before I purchase a, a whitelist spot, I have to go make sure that my um, Ethereum address is input. Yeah. You're, it, you, you know, it'll be like, it'll have like a connect wallet thing. Um, it'll connect it to MetaMask or whatever web three wallet and, and that that will be the, the address that is whitelisted. Okay. Uh, could we discuss the idea of the SPS DAO accumulating BTC for the long haul? I don't really see that being an option, Matt. Well, I mean, ultimately, the SPS DAO can do anything that the SPS holders want, right? So, um, you know, if, if generally people are like, hey, we want to do this thing. Right now, Splinterlands is the one putting up the proposals, but, like, Ultimately, literally any the SPS DAO is owned by the SPS token holders. So there's it's not even a question for us of like, can we do this or would we consider this? I mean, it's just literally whatever the token holders want to do. Uh, Crypto Ace thirty three. How many how many assets are available in the tower defense game? I don't know how you want to answer that. Our point. Um, so there's get, or the goal that we have is to have twenty five towers and twenty five spells, and they'll have different rarities each of them. Uh, and there'll and then, be one hero for launch. Uh, what is the best way to get our friends in from your perspective? I'm having a hard time handholding the in, during the onboarding process. We, I mean, we've talked about this in general. Like, yeah, we agree. The onboarding process is not great. We can do a hundred times better um, in the whole new player experience and everything. Uh, right now, our focus is on like getting kind of the core stuff of the game going the economy correct the validator nodes and all the new projects that we have going um you know need to be completed but like at some point in the future and as soon as possible i hope 
I want to have like a team dedicated to just the the whole onboarding and new player experience exclusively. And just we have like UI designers, you know, UX people, developers, support people, everything we need that are just focused on only how we make that whole experience better, you know, piece by piece. Uh, question, when will they upload the three DAO proposals about the recent Rift Watcher presale? Uh, I'm currently thinking it'll be four proposals and I'm trying to get a post out about it tomorrow. I have a little bit more internal feedback to get. Question, uh, when can we open land? As soon as humanly possible for us to implement it. We don't yeah, have I mean, there are two big dependencies, right? We have the uh, tech modernization and the non-card market. And those things are like prereqs for land. So part of tech modernization went live in the last update. More of it's going live in this current update. So we are currently adding prereqs for land. So... Uh, and so we think, I think of that as like land phase zero. So I know that's not what you guys want, but it, it's literally happening right now. Uh, Vlax is saying, no question. Just want you to know that I appreciate you. That's sweet, man. It's nice to get a little bit of positive feedback every now and then. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to stop any new questions at this point. Uh, why does the Splinterless schedule say silver gold tournament? Is it silver or gold or both? I guess I'm confused on what's the question specifically. The Splinterfest schedule it oh. apparently says silver gold tournament. Is no, it it's not. Or... It's not silver gold. It's we have a gold modern tournament and then a champ level oh. wild tournament. So it's neither. So it sounds like silver, but the gold is just wrong. I don't know why silver would be included in there. It's it's only the gold modern and the champion uh, wild. Okay. I think we just need to add a page. That's our bad. Okay. Uh, Elephantium is asking, when was the last time you had a look at how the rating system works? Currently, you get more rating if you are on a win streak. That seems wrong. Uh, and let's start with there. What Do we have any thoughts on changing how the rating systems work? I mean, well, so I don't know that it seems wrong. Um, there's no wrong or right here, but um, we had we had a specific plan for how the rating system worked. That was implemented years and years ago. A lot of things have changed in that time. So uh, we're definitely looking into how every single part of the, the whole economy and ranked play works like one piece at a time. Um, with Rift Walker Summoners being epic, people are speculating an opening without legendary potions. Can you please explain how using a potion to open a pack is being calculated? Oh no, that that would just be silly. It doesn't. The legendary potions don't take chance away from epic cards. They take uh, chance away from getting common cards. So the chances of getting epic cards are the same with or without potions. So you'd only be hurting yourself overall if you don't use potions. Question: If we sell twenty six thousand one hundred forty seven more chaos legion packs, can Mancer press the big red button? Uh, and yeah, not only could he, but uh, there would be a giant, beautiful Yasik the Conqueror that would pop out of that. I like the red buttons. Yeah. Ooh, shiny. Yeah, buy some packs, guys. We're almost there. Uh, is really a whitelist number set in stone? Could a possible path be to see the whitelist numbers then add 10% for the e sale? Uh, I'm at 10 I'm not sure what that means. He's just hoping that there might be more whitelist spots available. I mean, we, you know, we can give out as many whitelist spots as we want ultimately like this is just you know splinterlands is just selling this thing and putting it out there so you know that if there's some like egregious problem that happens with the with the whitelist sale or whatever like we we have a lot of options you know um to potentially give out more like whitelist spots or for different ways or whatever it is so you know we'll we'll see how it goes um, but we have a lot of flexibility there I could be more of an RSVP. What does that mean? That. Yeah, I'm not. Well, I'm going to move on. We'll talk uh, about why, it later, Ron. Uh, why was it decided to suppress stones from merit when players asked for both? Most of the guilds are far from store eight and can't accumulate them like other people do. Having an option for both makes sense. So I guess I I'm not. We, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I guess I don't understand why you know, why people would rather use merits for stones. Like merits are the only things that can be used for buying the packs. So, 
you know, I guess our thinking was that you would want to use the merits to buy the packs and use something else to buy the stones. I don't know. I don't know why it has anything to do with how far you are from store level eight. Also, it gives another use case for vouchers, something else to sink them into. Yeah. Uh, zombie dragon stats revealed next week. Uh, as soon as they are ready. But that, so just to be clear, the the um, the the airdrop card of the the Yusuit or however you pronounce it, you know, we mentioned in the post like that's not going to be right away when Rift Watchers launches. There's going to be like probably a couple weeks, maybe or so, before that airdrop drops, um, because we need to, you know, the, the airdrops sort of make up for the number of packs that were already opened that didn't include that card. So we need to give a little bit of time for people to open packs before that one is airdropped. Whereas the Osher, you know, will be airdropped, you know, right away as soon as it's ready. Um, when will prop two, AKA 34 be live tomorrow during, you know, maintenance. Yeah. There's a lot coming tomorrow. Hopefully it all makes it in. Uh, how many whitelists can we purchase in one transaction? Uh, it's going to be one at a time. Uh, will there be any opening of SBS reward pools for holding power defense or land assets similar to those game modes being available similar to validator nodes? Uh, we're going to, we're planning on putting up an SPS proposal because the community has been asking for it to start giving out SPS rewards for land holders. But again, like these are the type of things where um, SPS is ultimately controlled by SPS token holders. So, um, you know, if, if if the SPS token holders decide to, to give out SPS to tower defense pack holders, then they can do that. You know, they can token holders can this you know vote and agree to to do literally whatever they want. So right now, it'll need to be proposed to us, and if the community generally seems you know to want something, we'll we'll put up a proposal for whatever it is that the community wants, and you can vote on it. Uh, what happens if I buy two whitelist spots but I only use one? Can I get a refund of vouchers for the for the other after the remisement? So there's gonna there's not gonna be any refund. So if you buy whitelist spots, you don't use them. You know, you lose them, and and it's it's typically. I think, you know, the mint is going to go for a max of 30 days or until it sells out. And I think the whitelist spots are going to be available for, for less than that, maybe seven days or 14 days. So if you don't use your whitelist spot, you know, in the first week or two that it's available, it'll just go back into the pool for anyone else to be able to mint. Um, that way we make sure, like, for if whatever reason, you know, people have whitelist spots that they don't use. We don't want, like, Rune, Rooney to go unminted. So that's the plan there. Um, what's the story behind the card frames around you guys on town hall streams? Ron made them up, I think. <laughs> no, 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 that that was the the Baron's toolbox. That was the, ah, okay. So, yeah, so I mean, he's he's a. I can answer that. So uh, yeah, basically, just thought that the stream needed a little bit more flavor, and uh, Baron's Baron's toolbox provided an easy solution for that. That's it. I, I yeah. dig it. Yeah, he's been he's been killing it. Frankly, just um, he's 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 a really fun streamer. He's built all these tools. They look really nice. Uh, I'm, I'm really impressed with them. So thanks for all your community work, Axler. Uh, and so I know I've run late. Uh, I apologize. You know, as we as we try to crank out as much stuff, it's hard to it's hard to bring uh, all of this stuff together and, and keep it on time. Uh, hopefully you have felt like this is a action packed. Um, you know, town hall that you have gotten your questions answered, that you've heard a lot from our team about all the different things that we're building. Um, you know, I know that we have a couple more weeks that are super hard and uh, maybe we'll, we'll be able to enjoy some of the, the sort of like fourth quarter here without sprinting quite as much, but uh, I just want to thank the team, the creative team, the marketing team, the development team and the support team. Everybody's doing like a really amazing job here and uh, appreciate the way that, um, I don't know. I just just dreaming of how much work we could actually get done years ago. Like, you know, any one of these things that these guys have talked about tonight might have been like a whole quarter of a project for us. You know, it, it would have taken us three or four months of just working on that. And that'd be the only thing that we do. And now it's something like, hey, guys, why don't we tell you about the three of them that are happening simultaneously? I mean, it's just it's just unreal how much code that we are we're cranking out right now. And uh, I'm just really proud of this team, proud of this company, and uh, grateful to the community for supporting our projects, buying the stuff, and um, 
you know, the, the next really big one is the tower defense game, uh, 250,000 packs. It's a really small presale and it, and it starts tomorrow. So, uh, come, come hang out with us. Come, come, you know, hear the stories and hear from other people about what they're excited about. And, uh, let's go hope for the second, you know, short sellout where the thing we, we just blow through it and, you know, under a, uh, under uh, under sixty blocks or less, you know it should be should be pretty fast. Matt, anything you want to add for the end of the show tonight? Uh, yar, thank y'all, landlubbers, <laughs> for listening on Talk Like a Pirate Day. Wow, wow that's man. one of the most awesome things I've ever heard. That's yeah. awesome. I'm not Click good it. at impressions either. It's good. Uh, I don't know how I can top that. Uh, but there you go, fellas. It's a uh, it's a piratey goodbye from all of us here. Arr. Thanks, everybody. Hilarious. Thanks, guys. Have a good night.